Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to Hove for the opening day of the county championship season. Uh, the good news here is that we have got play. We had a very wet night last night. Uh, the ground staff have worked phenomenally hard to get the game on. In fact, I've just had a little wander out to the middle uh, and the outfield is still very damp. But uh, good news is it's playable. There's piles of sawdust at uh, each end of the ground and we're going to get underway at three o'clock. We've got 51 overs to be bowled uh, in the day. Uh, the news from the middle is that Sussex won the toss and maybe unsurprisingly on a day where uh, it's been very damp is that they are going to uh, bowl first. Uh, my name is Adrian Harms. Delighted that the, uh, the rest of the team with me today are uh, Andrew Radd from uh, BBC Radio Northampton and uh, Matt Green who spent some time coaching here and also at Surrey as well, uh, are going to be our commentary team. So just, you know, w people might have been listening to us earlier on, but just to say good afternoon to you fellas and hurrah, we've got some cricket. Yep, it's uh, full credit to Ben and the ground staff here at Hove who've done a terrific job. They've worked um, tirelessly since very early this morning to get the ground playable. Well done to the umpires because you're saying you've been out in the middle, I haven't, but you're saying this end is still, this south end uh, of the ground is still a little bit boggy in places but um, the players and the umpires have decided to get the game on so well done for that and um, yeah fascinating session but roughly half a day's play we're going to have 51 overs. I must admit I was a little surprised when you sit up here we're in a sort of an elevated position overlooking the ground at the south end looking up towards the uh, the pavilion and from here the outfield looks absolutely fantastic and it is fantastic but it is quite wet down in front of us. So as you say, I think congratulations to the umpires and everybody who's clearly determined to play today and those spectators who are coming. Many have come in free today because it's free day for watching. If you're listening around about Brighton and Hove or within spitting distance of the ground, you want to see some cricket, well, it will be free for the rest of the day. So uh, the news from the middle is that uh, Sussex have won the toss. They're going to bowl first. Let's start with our, our visitors from Northampton. Just tell us the uh, Northamptonshire side. Yeah, Andrew. Northamptonshire side, I suppose much as you would have expected, um, possibly with, with one thing to talk about, but uh, Northamptonshire will bat roughly in this order with Emilio Gay opening and Justin Broad, we did talk about this earlier, uh, has been put up to open the innings, a sort of makeshift opener in the absence of Ricardo Vasconcelos. He did the job in the friendly against Nottinghamshire last week, which made me think that that may have been uh, a sort of a stopgap arrangement. So he is down to open. We'll see if he does. Then uh, Luke Proctor, the captain at three. Karen Naya, back with the club this year, is at four. George Bartlett, former Somerset player, makes his first-class debut for Northamptonshire. So he becomes number 546 in the Northamptonshire Pantheon. Uh, Rob Keogh, starting his 15th season as a Northamptonshire first team player, is down at six. Safe Zabe at seven. Lewis McManus to keep wicket at eight. And then the three seamers, Ben Sanderson, Chris Tremaine, and also making his Northamptonshire debut, uh, Michael Finan, 27-year-old left armour, who's joined Northamptonshire on a short-term deal from Leicestershire. So he also makes his Northamptonshire debut and becomes number 547. Three players left out, James Sales, Gus Miller and Alex Russell. And um, those of us who are sort of big James Sales fans, I think will be a little bit disappointed at that. But equally, you look at the balance of the side and it's probably hard to see how you get him in there. Well, from a Sussex perspective, there are also uh, three debutants for Sussex today. Um, the two who arrived in the winter, notably John Simpson, the wicketkeeper, batsman and skipper, um, who will bat at number six. Danny Lamb, the uh, Lancashire all-round who arrived in the winter as well, who will bat at number eight. And Jaden Seals, the West Indian, who we presume will come in after Ollie Robinson at uh, number 11. So the Sussex uh, side is Haynes, Clark, also uh, Ollie Carter, who deputises for Chetish for Pajara, who um, hasn't returned from injury. He's got a back problem, but Sussex confident he'll be fit to play at Leicester uh, next week. Uh, James Coles, John Simpson was a will bat at six. Finn Hudson Prentice, the leading run scorer for Sussex in the championship last year, coming in at seven. Uh, Danny Lamb, Jack Carson, the off-spinner, Ollie Robinson, uh, and Jaden Seals. Um, if you're looking in touch with us, it's, it's great to have your correspondence. So our email address here is sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk, or you can tweet us at Old Man Rad, that's R A D D, or at BBC uh, Sussex Sport, either of those or those three modes 
of communication will get through to us. And I say 51 overs to be bowled today. So we've lost just over half a day. But in view of the fact there's so little cricket going on around the country, I think we're very lucky to have some play. The one voice you haven't heard from so far is uh, Matt Green. Matt, um, so since winning the toss, selecting the bowl, I guess that's no massive surprise, really. Uh, no, uh, no, no, uh, no surprise, really. With just starting to see some overhead conditions creeping in as well at the, the back end of the ground, some cloud cover uh, building up and no no surprise Sussex winning the toss and, and having a bowl. Um, I know we say it quite a lot on the, on the commentary, but um, the first sort of 20, 15, 20 minutes of, um, of this mini session are going to be really interesting and see what the ball does. Obviously, we know it's a change of ball this season as well from for the early games from, from Duke to Kookaburra. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting um, sort of opening 15 minutes. It certainly will, um, and we presume that Robinson and uh, Jaden Sills will take the new ball as far as uh, Sussex are concerned. Uh, just a quick shout out around the ground, just to make sure that the commentary is going out. If you've got the headset on, if you could give us a little wave, and that's slightly worrying because no one's waving. Oh yes, they are. <laughs> yes, yeah. they are. Yes. Wonderful. Good. Yeah. So the commentary is going out loud and clear, um, which is great news. The other interesting fact, and Matt was mentioning it there. Uh, Andrew is that we'll be using the Kookaburra ball, but also no floodlights are going to be used in county championship cricket. And I'm just wondering if on the first day <laughs> with a late start, whether people may not be aware of that. And it is clouding up a little. It is, yes. As, as Matt said, it was about an hour and a half ago. It was absolutely glorious. And it was blue sky. And we were taking photographs and sending them out and saying, this is wonderful. And it's just coming over a little. The sun's sort of hazy now. It is coming over a little bit uh, cloudy. So, yeah, you would think it's obviously a good toss for... Uh, uh, for Sussex to win, I mean, just to run through the timings because just I know people like to you know like to sort of sort themselves out and know when they're going to have to put the kettle on. Yeah. Um, we start at three. Uh, we are going to take tea at four thirty-five, not four thirty-four or four thirty-six, but four thirty-five. Uh, and with closer play scheduled at 6.30. So, yes, I mean, uh, we were saying actually last night, certainly where I was uh, staying not too far from the ground, it was, it was pretty much dark by half past seven. Yes. So um, might be an issue later. We'll see. So, uh, and you probably know the rules better than I do, which is not good for me, but it says close at 6.30. If there's overs to be bowled, will they go beyond yeah, 6.30, yes, Andrew? Go, go be, I think it will go beyond, um, beyond yeah, 6.30. Beyond 6.30. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, we'll keep abreast of that one as we go through. I've had our first, uh, well, we've had a couple of emails in, but the first one of the afternoon comes from John Malone. He says, hi, Adrian, and your team. Uh, good afternoon. Great to have you back. I've been to the gym today. Well, a new venture for me, but definitely needed. So we'll settle down now and watch a few overs on the stream. Rain free, we hope, says uh, John. So thank you for joining us on the stream. People listening across the network and across uh, the stream as well as the Sussex players make their way down the steps in the distance in their gleaming white kit, and I'm sure there'll be a nice round of applause as they uh, make their way onto the field. The kit is probably never cleaner than the first day, Andrew. <laughs> no, that's right. Before it gets a few things get stuck in the bottom of the bag for for somebody to discover come um, come September. Mind you, it's a bit like that with us. I wasn't, and I had to sort out my uh, my the bag that I carry around with me around the circuit and. I uh, thought I'd better just sort of empty it and see what's in there. It was a, actually a packet of shortbread biscuits, which I, I think were from, from the Oval last September. <laughs> uh, they actually look quite edible, but I didn't try. <laughs> well, the two umpires are making their way out to the middle. Uh, Paul Baldwin and Surindran Shamogam, uh, which I've probably made a complete horlicks of pronouncing. But um, I think, Andrew, you said he's known around the circuit as... Surrey. Right. Surrey Shanmugam. Well, we're going to call him Surrey because um, I don't want to make a mess of pronouncing the gentleman's name uh, throughout. So, Sussex are making their way onto the field in their gleaming whites, and they are followed by the uh, Northamptonshire openers, who are just doing a bit of uh, warming up on the boundary in front of the pavilion. That's Emilio Gay and Justin Broad. Uh, the sun is disappeared from view. We've got quite a lot of cloud above the ground now at the moment, and I can see that Ollie Robinson is stripped off and ready to bowl the opening over uh, of the season here at Hove. Uh, John Simpson, the skipper, just having a quick word to him. And Robinson will bowl down the hill, very much his favoured end uh, for Ollie Robinson. So much press speculation about him this week. and uh, But that's all about on the pitch, and I'm sure Ollie is very pleased just to be out there uh, playing cricket. So, uh, Ollie Robinson is going to bowl the first ball of the season for Sussex. He's got Tom Allsop standing at first slip, Tom Clark at second, James Coles 
at third. They've got a leg slip in place, which is an interesting field placing in Jack Carson. Uh, Danny Lamb is trotting around the boundary edge here down to uh, fine leg. And a nice round of applause for uh, Ollie Robinson, who is going to take the new ball. And the new season is about to get underway. Uh, Emilio Gay is taking uh, his guard left-hander. The rest of the field, there's a point, a mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And fine leg, Danny Lamb, just to our right here in the commentary box. Jaden Seals is warming up at mid-on. Uh, looks like he's going to maybe bowl the next over from the up the hill. So he's got the short straw, Ollie Robinson, um, with the slope with him. You can see the wind just rustling his trousers. We're all set to go. Umpire's making the signal towards the scorers. And here we go. It's the start of the 2024 cricket season here at home, and the first ball of which is going to be bowled by Ollie Robinson running down the hill. Uh, comes into bowl to Emilio Gay. He's in on bowls, and the first ball is outside of the off stump, and it's left alone by Gay and goes through at good height uh, to John Simpson, the Sussex wicketkeeper and captain. And uh, there is no run. A nice little compare and contrast. Last time Northamptonshire were here in the Championship three years ago, uh, it was the first match that when the ground was opened up to spectators after COVID, and they had I think allowed 800 in, wasn't it? On the that's a great the first couple of days. Um, but the uh, well, the decision to open it up and have free admission today was fully justified. Good, good crowd in. In comes uh, Robinson. Bowls and gaze back on his stumps and plays with a high right elbow, punches that into the onside, but there is no run fielded there by um, Ollie Carter. I was talking to Ben Gibson, the groundsman at the uh, at the toss, and uh, I said, oh, it's still quite wet out here, Ben, and he was saying it's been a really tough winter for the ground stuff. There's just been so much rain, not just here on the south coast, but everywhere over the last few months, and it has been a real challenge. So, um, But the first two deliveries would have... Um, Made him very pleased, I think. First one going through about waist high to John Simpson as in comes Robinson again, racing in down the hill, in and bowls, and gays forward to a ball of good length and just plays that into the offside. And there is no run. You can't really tell after three balls, but Ollie Robinson looks to be running in with, uh, with good rhythm from that uh, Cromwell Road end of the ground with the big blots of flats uh, behind him. As I say, those three slips in place. Looks a tall fella, Emilio Gay. He is. He's about six three, six four. Big boxing fan. Is he? Loves his boxing. <laughs> I wouldn't argue with him. <laughs> well, he takes guard now as in comes uh, Robinson again. Over the wicket bowls and Gay again. He's back on his stumps and plays this with soft hands onto the onside, fielded by Ollie Carter, who comes running in from mid wicket to field. Not cold down here. It's sort of cold enough to have a jumper on if you're out of the sun. Um, it's a little chilly, but the uh, the weather forecast for tomorrow is is actually quite warm. It's going to be very breezy down here on the south coast, but I think the weather forecast is good. Uh, a lot of spectators I've spoken to are juggling football and cricket tomorrow, and I think there's all sorts of problems on the train, which may not be easy for people to get between the two. Uh, in comes Robinson. Bowls, and the first runs of the season for Northamptonshire, and a beautiful shot as well from Emilio Gay, overpitched by Ollie Robinson, and Gay clips that one beautifully uh, through widish mid on for four runs. That was a lovely shot, lovely way to get off the mark. Northamptonshire four without loss. Well, I think Matt made the point earlier that when Emilio Gay's going, there aren't many more attractive players to watch on the circuit. He's very easy on the eye. Had a bit of a frustrating year last year, missed the start of the season. Uh, with it after the knee operation, felt he probably had to sort of play catch up a little bit and went after balls that he probably didn't need to. Um, his career average is just a hair over 30, and he's a much better player than that. Well, Ollie Robinson, having conceded that boundary, has decided he's going to go around the wicket for the uh, final ball of the opening over. And he's running in. The sun has completely disappeared as in comes Robinson, bowls and gazes up on his toes and punches that uh, to a point where it's fielded. By who's that over there? Finn Hudson Prentice. So it's the end of the opening over um, of the match, the opening over of the season. Northamptonshire, four without loss. Uh, Broad is yet to face a ball. Emilio Gay is on four. And it looks like it's going to be Jaden Seals who's going to open the bowling from this, the C end of the ground. What, what did you make of Ollie Robs in that opening over, Matt? Um, it's always interesting. Uh, first over the, of, the, um, of the season and of, of this game. Um, well, he looked like he was coming down the hill with with a really good intent. Um, obviously, Stephen, it's interesting to see that he changed the angle from um, around the wicket to over. Um, but again, what really struck me with Amelia Gay, I watched him a lot last year with with Radders, um, 
and it's just his elegance really of just how quickly he can pick length um there's so it's always hard especially at Hove where there's a bit of a slope uh, getting into the ball uh, and then going back um and uh, I'm pretty I'm sure he'd be pleased to have negotiated the um the first over of the season um and again it just looks looks to be he always looks to be a positive player uh, gay um and again now just looking forward to to seeing um Seals bowl here he comes then Jaden Seals running away from us into bowl to the right-handed broad that's outside the off stump. Broad doesn't need to play it. Let's it go through to John Simpson behind the stump. Still three slips in place and a gully. Cover, extra cover, mid on, mid wicket, and a man down at long leg. So no mid off in, just inviting the drive. This is a tough ask for Justin Broad, relatively inexperienced in first class cricket. Played just six games last year, signed in the middle of the season. Finds himself opening the innings in the absence of Ricardo Vasconcelos. His seals in bowls to him again outside the off stump and broad. Leaves well alone. Made 150 right at the back end of the season. To send him into the winter in good hearts. Like, it's like every round of golf you play, isn't it? When you, Even if you've had a, a bad round, you make a, a decent drive on the 18th and it makes you coming back for more and makes you a bit more encouraged for the next round. And... Justin Brawl made a certainly good impression, I think, in white ball last year, but this is a different challenge. Opening the batting is never easy in red ball cricket, especially not under cloud cover in April. Here is Seals in again, bowls, and it pushes forward a little tentatively. It goes off a thick outside edge, but all along the ground into the gully, and there's no run. Seals has played test cricket for the West Indies, 10 tests, 10 ODIs. 22 years old, tall, short sleeve shirt, white wristband on each wrist. Encouragement for him from around the field, as you would expect. And I say, a good sized crowd in. And word has got around that we were actually going to get some play. Here's Seals in. Bowls to Broad again outside the off stump. Broad leaves alone. Good bounce, good carry. Goes through to. John Simpson, who I see, was awarded his county cap as well by uh, a heavily bearded Matt Pryor mm. earlier yeah. on today. Yeah, it's good to see uh, Matt Pryor. It's been, um, he's been quite vocal about matters down here at Hove, and um, yeah, let's hope that any sort of rifts have been healed now and Matt Pryor is, is uh, back in the fold here at Hove. Well, it's always nice when former players care, isn't it? It is. Here's Seals. Running in away from us, bowls to Justin Broad, who looks to turn that away on the onside, does so, but doesn't manage to beat the man in there at mid-wicket, and there's no run. Quite like Seal's action, isn't it? It's quite a, quite a fluid, it's quite an easy on the eye action. To say, he just looks very, very relaxed indeed. But the umpire's just, sorry, Sundergams, just having a little word about him maybe following through a little bit close to the danger area. Never a good sign in the first over of the season. No. So here he is to complete his first over. And he's in again, bowling to Broad outside the off stump. And Broad doesn't play it, goes through to Simpson. So a maiden to start for Jaden Seals and Northamptonshire. Two overs gone, put into bat a four for no wicket. Interesting back to see um, in between overs, Sussex running between overs. They they lost five points last season for a sl I mean, I think it's unforgivable to... Um, uh, to get penalised for a slow over it. I think John Simpson's clearly having none of that this season, running between the wickets. No, you can just see there how Simpson's sort of rallying the troops around, uh, sprinting between the overs. I also think that could have a little bit to do with the overhead conditions as well. Obviously trying to get as many overs in um, while, the, while, the cloud, while you've got the cloud cover. And it is, it is looking fairly dark over Hove at the moment. Ollie Robinson is continuing this attack around the wicket. He comes into bowl to the left-handed Emilio Gay, who lets that one go. The ball goes through to Simpson, round about waist high, and there is no run. Uh, there, is, it, there are slightly brighter skies around to the, the, the southwest, so hopefully we won't get any, any interruptions. Indeed, the weather forecast suggests that we should have a dry afternoon, and you know, fingers crossed we could get the bulk of these 51 overs in. Uh, but as we say, no floodlights. Um, so if it does get gloomy, we, we won't have the benefit of those as 
Robinson again makes his way in uh, around the wicket bowls and Emilio Gay is very easily forward and plays into the onside fielded by Carter and there is no run still the three slips in place Tom Allsop at first Tom Clark at second James Coles in third fr fresh from his stint with the Lions out in India had a very good season last year James Coles and we're looking to build on that this season Finn Hudson Prentice at uh, point Tom Haynes at mid-off, Jaden Seals at mid-on, Ollie Carter at mid-wicket, and Danny Lamb making his debut here down in front of us. At fine leg, Robinson in bowls, and he works this one uh, away into the offside. It goes between a uh, third slip and point, and a comfortable single for uh, Gay, who moves to five in Northamptonshire, are five without loss. It is a bit brighter, isn't it? You it said is. It was, uh, sort of Clearer weather, yeah. a bit brighter skies, higher cloud coming in from our left, so the southwest. And um, yeah, let's hope that continues because it certainly is a degree or two brighter than it was when we started. No, definitely. And I think I'm getting a glimmer of sunshine now. There we go. Um, Careful. Good news. <laughs> now, um, Robinson's coming over the wicket to the uh, right handed broad, and he's bought a fourth slip in place, who's Jack Carson. In comes Robinson Bowles, and Ward is right in behind that and plays it uh, to point, fielded by Hudson Prentice, and there is no run. It's quite breezy, I can see, particularly the Northamptonshire flag that's flying proudly on top of the clock tower scoreboard. The Sussex flag looks a little faded. It does, it? doesn't it? Yes, it does. Perhaps the club ought to get invested in a new flag. It just looks. Northamptonshire is relatively new. It's, uh, very, it's a big flag as it well. Is isn't it? it is a very big flag. <laughs> it doubles as a duvet, I think, in case the scorer finishes up having to sleep in the corridor. <laughs> well, it's billowing away. And Robinson. Uh, in a game, bowls and Broad plays this on the bounce to Carson, who fields um, a fourth slip and then makes as if to throw the stumps down. But Broad was clearly in his ground, and in the end, Carson decided not to throw the ball. And uh, there is no run. For those of you just joining us, Sussex winning the toss, electing to bowl first. Uh, debutants in uh, Danny Lamb, John Simpson, and Jaden Seals. Ollie Robinson is just four wickets shy of 400 for Sussex in first class cricket. He's in on bowls and Broad is four to all of good length. Played to mid on. And that is the end of the over. So North Hans five without loss. Gay five. Uh, Broad yet to score. You're listening to live cricket here on the BBC. BBC Radio Sussex. BBC Radio Northampton. Myself, Adrian Harms, alongside Andrew Ladd and Matt Green. If you'd like to send us an email, please do. Sussex cricket at BBC co.uk about anything really and we'll, we'll discuss it as much as we can <laughs> or you could tweet us uh, at andrew sorry no, it's not at old man rad i'm sorry r-a-double-d just or, think of old man river it's <laughs> or matt is green uh, or be at bbc sussex sport anyway it'll, it'll get through to us if you'd like, like to join our, our commentary it's um we were considering how fortunate we are to actually get any cricket today just looking around the country in division one three of the five games no play today. The ones at Durham, Kent and Lancashire. I'll bring you up to date with what's happening elsewhere in a second. See, the batting side is doing pretty well on this first day. As Seals starts his second over, bowling round the wicket to the left-handed Gay. Down the leg side, has he strangled him? He has. Caught behind down the leg side. Little thin edge from Emilio Gay and John Simpson. We'll talk about him making his mark and stamping his authority on the side. Took off. It's a super catch down the leg side from Simpson. Seal strikes with his seventh ball for Sussex in first class cricket. Gay goes for five and Northamptonshire put into bat are five for one. Well it was just, a, you say he was almost strangled down the leg side wasn't he Matt? It was a, you know, he was looking to clip that one away down towards fine leg but a, 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 he made up good ground there John Simpson. What a fan, just watching the replay now, what a fantastic catch from, from Simpson uh, showing great athleticism and and sometimes you've got to read that as well from Simpson, the keeper. He's, he's done really well, and I feel for I feel a bit for Gay. I thought he started really positively, although only five runs um, this afternoon. Um, started positively, and it's a real horrible way to get out, sort of strangled down the leg side. But Simpson will be chuffed to bits, as will Seal. Um, a great start, um, a great start for Sussex. That really was a terrific catch, wasn't it? Down the leg side by John Simpson. Just took off anticipated well held on to it when he hit the ground as well which is never that easy and a really really good take from Simpson and it brings 
Northamptonshire's captain, Luke Proctor, to the crease. 35 years old now. Proctor in his second season as Northamptonshire's Red Bull captain. Took over the side last year. Had a pretty tough first season in charge. Missed some cricket because of injury. But uh, certainly seems to have made the number three berth his own. He was put up to that place in the order by John Sadler at the start of the 2022 season and almost like a rebirth of his career, certainly as a batter. Had a very, very good year in 22. And he's facing his first ball of the season with Seals round the wicket, three slips in place, and Proctor plays that up towards mid-on, where it's fielded by Ollie Robinson, and there's no run. Frustrating time for Proctor, as I say, last year. Missed cricket early on, Sam Whiteman taking over the side. And never really got going with the bat for any, with any consistency, although he showed his famed adhesive qualities in helping to save the match up at uh, Lancashire, Old Trafford. James Sales also played very well on the last day there against the spinners. Here's Seals, and again, bowls to Proctor, who comes onto the front foot, pushes it up towards extra cover, and there's no run. Stays at five for one. As mentioned there, the other games in progress. Playing at Trent Bridge, where Essex are 131 for two against Nottinghamshire. At Edgbaston, Worcestershire going well, 167 for one against Warwickshire. Pairs against the Bears. In Division two, called it off at Derby very early on between Derbyshire and Gloucestershire. Here's Seals. A little bit of watery sunshine now as he's round the wicket, bowls outside the off stump. And Proctor leaves it, I think, as much on length as on line, bouncing well clear of the stumps. Proctor has nothing to do with it. At Lords, Glamorgan batting first against Middlesex. Glamorgan 192 for two. Sam Northeast making a strong start to the season is 99 not out. And obviously we're playing here. Yorkshire Leicestershire at Headingley. Still a start delayed there. And here's Seals in again, bowling once again. Almost carbon copy of the previous delivery. Possibly a little straighter. Proctor leaves it alone. So it bounces well over the top of the stumps into the gloves of Simpson, who gives him an appreciative clap. Five for one. Good afternoon to Hayden Spensley, who's uh, one of our regular. Listeners, also the chaplain of Northampton Town Football Club. Oh. And uh, he says, summer begins, good to hear you again on air. So it's good to have you with us, Hayden. We hope you'll be with us for the whole of the season. Every ball of every match, of course, on the county season, you can hear live on the BBC. Here's Seals. And again, outside the off stump, and Proctor leaves it alone into the gloves of John Simpson. Applause from around the ground for a successful over for Jaden Seals. A wicket with his seventh ball for Sussex. Dismissing Emilio Gay with the aid of a very good catch by Simpson down the leg side. And with four overs gone, Northamptonshire are five for one. And actually, Matt, I mean, as experienced as John Simpson is, you know, he'd have, he'd have had a few butterflies today. You know, he'd be glad to take that first catch. Yeah, I think it's always a nervous time uh, joining a new club, uh, new players, new environment, uh, new coaching staff. Um, and it's, I think when, when you join anywhere, new, any new club, it's all about you want to make an impact straight away. And really good to see Simpson doing that. In comes Robinson, comes in and bowls to Broad, who plays firmly down the ground. That's a lovely looking shot. That's going to be four runs. Nothing wrong with that. Over pitch by Ollie Robinson. And the on drive is it's a difficult shot to play, the on drive. I often say for the right hander. Slightly over pitching Robinson and Broad with a very straight back punches the ball back past the bowler and picks up his first boundary. He goes to four and Northamptonshire to nine for one. No, really hard shot, the, the on drive. Probably one of the hardest shots in the book. Um, just his great balance, um, just head position, just lent into the ball nicely. And, and as you said, Harms, he drove the ball really nicely up the ground for his first boundary. Um, they've got some changes. I, th I think it might be a new scoreboard, actually. Someone will correct me. Um, as in comes Robinson running in towards us down the hill. Bowls to Broad, who lets that one go outside the off stump taken by Simpson. 
and there is uh, no rum. But certainly from the angle that I sit at, and it could have been my glasses last year, I don't know. <laughs> I was really struggling to get the numbers right. But I can see clearly today it says Northamptonshire on nine for one, Proctor yet to score and Broad is on four. I thought you, thought you were going to burst into song. You can, you can see clearly now the rain has gone. <laughs> and it tells us that Ollie Robinson is bowling, and he's bowling from the Cromwell Road end, and that we've got 46.4 overs left in the day. It is very nice and clear, actually. It though, is, isn't it? yeah. So that's, uh, that's great news. Um, the fourth slip has gone back in place now. Jack Carson, Robinson in bowls. And again, Broad shows good judgment. So that lets that one go outside of the other. I'm taking about waist high. By Simpson. Good to see good carry, um, Matt, so far today. I mean, I mean, keepers like that, don't they? Yeah, no, really good carry. Um, I think Ben Gibson, the groundsman, will be happy with um, happy with the pitch and the, and the way it's playing. Um, obviously, you said butterflies for the for the players, but also um, butterflies for the ground staff uh, on the on the first day of the year. It's been interesting just watching the the video back as well. The lack of sort of uh, movement in the air uh, this afternoon. Because there was quite a bit of cloud cover as. Robinson makes his way in again, the bowls on board again, forward plays to backward point, no run, fielded by Hudson Prentice. Um, email has come in uh, from Chris, and he says, hello, I'm currently watching the game in Honduras. There we are, good As you do. In South America, um, where it's breakfast time. I'm back home in July to the sunny climes of Houghton Regis. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, in Bedfordshire. I'm hoping for a great season for the Steelbacks. I'm a huge fan of John Sadler. Uh, and he's the man to lead us to silverware, League Two title and T20 glory, as long as no injuries. In comes Robinson, bowls and broad, plays that to Carson, who's at fourth slip. There is no run. So thank you very much, uh, Chris, to great for you. Welcome um, to our coverage. And thank you for listening in from Honduras. Not entirely, I mean, it's in South America. I'm not quite sure where it is in relation to sort of Brazil and Argentina. It's just the other side of Eastbourne, isn't it? <laughs> um, Teddy's been in touch. He says, hi, gent. Shame no play to 3pm. But great to see our first wicket by Seals. The first of many, which hopefully will be another exciting season. Hopefully down to Hove. Great to hear you back. Hopefully down to Hove tomorrow. Great to have you back. Great to hear from you too, uh, Teddy, who's in Lewis. In comes uh, Robinson Bowles to Broad. He clips this one firmly to mid-wicket. And there is no run. End of Ollie Robinson's third over. Three overs, no maidens, no wicket for nine. Northamptonshire are nine for one. Broad on four. Propped to the skipper yet to score. Uh, the man out, Emilio Gay, who was caught by John Simpson off the bowling of Jaden Seals for five. Many thanks for all your uh, interaction so far. We've only been playing for 20 minutes or so, but uh, lots of messages coming through. Afternoon to Graham. Graham Smith, who's uh, been in touch with us. I don't think it's that Graham Smith. I think it's a different one. Um, Suggesting he said, has there been an announcement yet about the signing of uh, Michael Finan? Well, I think the thing came out from the club yesterday um, to say that it was a short term deal, say, so after he played in that game at uh, Trent Bridge last week. Here's Seals round the wicket to Proctor, who tries a rather mm. aerial, wafty drive. And it goes through to Simpson, but it could have. So easily taking the catch, a little bit firm-footed, and now Proctor rehearses the stroke, using his feet a little more decisively. Also, uh, Richard Beveridge has messaged about um, the player numbers. I was mentioning earlier about George Bartlett becomes 546 and Michael Fine and 547. He said he's ranked his great grandfather will be numbered among the players in the 1930s. Well, if you let me have get back onto us and let me know his name. I can tell you what his number is. His seals in again. Bowls, and this time Proctor does get it away through the covers, and that streaks away over this outfield. However much rain they've had, that whistle down towards the cocktail scoreboard. That's right, isn't it? Club tower scoreboard. Club tower scoreboard. Yeah. yeah. Cocktail from anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Thinking about this evening's um, social arrangements already. <laughs> Runs away for four. Nice shot from Proctor to get him off the mark. And Northamptonshire up to 13 for one. So, yes, if you, uh, if you let us know what his name is. A few made their debuts around about that time, but uh, we'll be able to give you his unique player number. Going back to George Thompson, who is number one. And here's Jaden Seals around the wicket. Bowls again to Proctor. Plays it out. On the onside this time, just rolls up towards mid-wicket. And there's no run there. I have to credit our esteemed press box colleague, 
Mr. Paul Weaver, over to our right for mentioned when I was on air for the wicket that it was Jaden Seal's seventh wick seventh third delivery for Sussex. And he points out of course the seventh seals, the seventh seal being the great Ingmar Bergman film, one of the classics of European cinema. That'll get the headline get in there somewhere, won't it? His he was in again outside the off stump, left alone by Proctor. Certainly brighter now. The clouds lifted. You can see it's broken up a little bit, and just a little bit of blue sky around. As I said this morning, as my nan used to say, just about enough to make a pair of sailor's trousers. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It looks quite bright, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. ho hopefully, we, you know, it, the light may be an issue later on, but um, certainly at the moment, the, the clouds look quite high, which is good. The other thing which I'll ask um, you and Matt about, because um, one of our regular correspondents, Andy Dan, is exercised somewhat. His seals in Bolster Proctor again outside the off stump. Proctor leaves it well alone. Um, is this business of the playing hours today, because obviously we've started at three o'clock, um, and they will take tea at 4.35. Now, he is asking, and it's not an unreasonable question, why, when you've got a late start, you've got a number of overs that you've got to try and get in with you know, potentially light an issue, why stop for tea after an hour and a half yeah, I think and take so. another 20 minutes out of the day? I think it's a fair point. I think it's a very fair point. And mm. uh, Andy is obviously not happy with this. So no. Here's Seals kicking up his heels as he runs in and bowls short to Proctor who ducks underneath it and it loops over his head into the gloves of John Simpson with a slap and that's the end of another over from Seals he's bowled three overs one for four and Northamptonshire are 13 for one four of those to Proctor four to Broad a boundary to each I'm always um it's just an observation. I just wonder whether Sussex might be slightly disappointed they haven't made these Northamptonshire openers play a bit more. They've been able to let an awful lot go by. Yeah, I think that there's been there's been you would say too many easy leaves um, as a as a bowler uh, early on with a new ball in your hand. I think the the real quality is is making sure the batsman has to make a decision. Um, Comes Robinson. Down the hill bowls and Broad does have to play at this and plays it to his wicket, no run. So you'd always want you, you're encouraging the batsman to, to make a decision. You don't want to make the as a bowler, you don't want to make the decisions for for the batter. So, you know, is that a decision on length? Should the batsman go forward or back, or is it a ball that's going to challenge the top of off stump? And do they need to play or leave? Um, I think that the boundary in the previous over Proctor through through the covers again. You wouldn't see Sill too dis encouraged by that because obviously with the with the catches behind the bat Robinson bowling with four slips into Broad and Broad is forward and plays on the bounce to Carlson who makes a good stop and they're at fourth slip uh, there is no run I've had a message from uh, Lizzie Ammon from the Times who's here today I'll very much come to what Johnny Robinson saying she's watching side on it looks like Robinson is bowling with something like his normal pace uh, which is uh, and he does seem to be I mean that, that does look sort of Oli pace, doesn't he? I mean, he's not he's steaming in, but he, he's he, he's certainly bending his back here. He's on his way again. Bowls and forward comes Broad and just plays in front of him. There is no run. No, I would definitely agree there with uh, with Lizzie, and uh, obviously she's got a great view at, at side on here at Hove. Um, just with Oli Oli coming down the hill, really looks like he's. Um, you know, he, he looks fully fit um, and, and and eager to go, uh, which is which is great for Sussex and and England supporters um, alike. It's just interesting when you really can see his control now with the Kookaburra ball, um, where with the Duke ball it would swing swing a lot more. So you can see Ollie just coming tight to the stumps, trying to bring his um, catches behind the bat into play. Robinson again bowls, driven by a boy. It's a very good stop by Tom Haynes at mid off prevents. Uh, a single. We were talking about the players' whites looking sparkling as they made way out. I suspect Tom Haynes may have a grass stain on his on his trousers. In fact, I can see it now, just on his right <laughs> trouser. You can see oh, the geez. stain. So he's got some work to do, has Tom. Um, For those um, pub quizzes, who are going to be asked the question, I'm sure, who made the first century of the 2024 Championship season? Sam, Neath, Sam North East just got there for Glamorgan against Middlesex at Lords. 104 not out. Fine player, Robinson in again, bowl. Well, that's a good delivery to Broad, who was slightly caught in two minds. In the end, it was a good leave, and the ball 
rattle past the end of his nose into the gloves of Simpson. And there is no run. A couple of emails. Hi, everyone. So excited for the first game of the season. May this be the year we enter the first division, uh, says Jane. Enjoying the commentary. Jane from Shoreham by Sea. Thank you, Jane, for getting in touch. Thank you for, for listening to us today. Steve Harris has been in touch. Hello, Steve. He says, great to be back. Feared the worst, but the ground staff have been fabulous. Can't believe I'm already at home watching proper cricket. Here's to promotion. Hope you wintered well, uh, says Steve. In comes Robinson Bowles. Let go outside the off stump by Broad. There is no run. That's the end of a maiden over from Ollie Robinson, who's just getting in the groove here. Four overs, one maiden. No wicket for nine. Northamptonshire are 13 for one. Steve, who lives all the way up in Stonehaven. Oh, yeah, near Aberdeen. Yes, and he's made the trip down to Hove. He's a, a very loyal supporter, <laughs> is uh, Steve. Um, and I said every year, he's a, a big Wolverhampton Wanderers fan as well, but he, he can't help that. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Trevor Cox has been in touch. He says, uh, hi, Adrian, nice to hear you again. Hopefully for a successful season, not stewarding this year at Hove. So maybe able to watch a bit more cricket from the stands. Regards, us, oh, uh, regards also to Mr. Green. Best wishes, Trevor C. Uh, top man, Trevor. Uh, yeah, he used to be an umpire as well. Um, Did he? Really, really nice man. And it's uh, great to hear from him. And send my regards. <laughs> Jaden Seals with it. Orange soles on his boots, visible as he kicks up his heels and bowls to oh, Proctor, and that's a beauty. And that squared him up, and it flies past the outside edge into the gloves of John Simpson. You always say about Luke Proctor, he's not going to win too many marks for artistic impression or being aesthetically pleasing, but mightily effective. Usually sells himself dearly. David Ripley, when he was head coach, was described as one of the unsung heroes of the side. Well, now mm. he's captain, of course, who started his career at Lancashire, moved to Northamptonshire about eight years ago. And facing West Indian fast bowler Jaden Seals, and this time Proctor just drops a bat on it, runs out into the offside. Fielded at cover, and there's no run. Stays at 13 for one. Um, Callum's been in touch, Andrew. He's watching the, from the pavilion. And he says, what an impressive catch that was from Simpson. Here's to a good season. Uh, and you were talking about, uh, I miss what you were saying, about a film, which I don't Oh, yes, The Seventh Seal. Right. OK, so it says, was he related to Gareth Bergman? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And yeah. on the ball down here, you know. I tell you, here all, <laughs> here all week. Here's Seals. Three slips and a goal. He bowls short, and that's pulled away right. by Proctor, and that's gone for half a dozen. That's six into the... I think it, it just rattled into the seats at the back of the pavilion. Ooh. And, well, Proctor getting the short ball. He's taken it on, and that's gone into the stand for six. And now the umpire's... Oh, here comes Brenda. Over the over. Oh, is that, is that Brenda? Yeah, well, here comes Brenda. In a, she's got a raincoat on she today. She has got a raincoat on, and she's retrieved the ball from somewhere or other. I think she's bought out another box of balls. Actually, mate, that may even have just flown. There's a gap, isn't there, between the indoor yes. school and the end of that pavilion, and it might just... There's a, a man in a high-vis jacket now looking quizzically down there, so it may just have yes. gone over the... Uh, gone just in that gap. Well done, Brenda. First in oh, the queue. Very impressive. It, it's, Every it, game. It's one of the great great sort of differences around the circuit, isn't it? When um, when the, the replacement ball comes out, for whatever reason, it's either been hit out of the ground or gone out of shape or whatever. And some of the, the counties have these sort of silver briefcases, don't they? Look, look as though the president's strike, nuclear strike codes are in there. And some people have a cardboard box. You talk about them and us earlier. That's, <laughs> that's probably the one of the great signs of it. But... It's interesting, Proctor last year, I think it was a game that you and I did together, back end of the Somerset game, when Proctor just decided to take it on. Yeah. And I think it was one of the, it was um, Overton, wasn't it, was, was bouncing him. And he did take it on and took it on very successfully. So maybe that's what Proctor's modus operandi is going to be against the short ball this year. Hit it out the ground, fair enough. He goes into double figures, 10 to him, 19 for one. Now, there's still a certain amount of running around going on out there. That's a Is it raining? Well, there's no, a field is running into the pavilion, up to the top there, 
and the umpires just asked to be given the ball. I'm just waiting to see what's happening because two of the Sussex fielders, Messers, oh, I'm going to see who it is up there. Oh, no. Gone up there and they're now into the top part of the pavilion. I think the ball might have lodged in the guttering. Yeah, just in that grooving, it looks like. Now, oh, he's going to in the interest of health and safety, I'm not at all sure this is a terribly good idea, but oh, one of the we. Sussex players is now oh my Lord. going over the balcony onto the awning at the just above the, the seating in the front of the pavilion, and he's got the ball. Now, who was that? That's, well, that's very impressive. Somebody wearing number five. Crokem. It's Henry Crokem. Henry Crokem. Eastbourne's finest is, well, that's a very, very good effort from him. But I just slightly wonder about the health and safety implications. And those of you watching on the stream will see him rather gingerly. There we go. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Well done, Henry. And he's flicked it down onto the field. So the original ball has been retrieved. In the meantime, um, it has actually come over rather dark again, which I think is why we were wondering whether it was starting to spit with rain, but that's very good from Henry Crocombe. Good effort. And he's getting a, a well-deserved round of applause for retrieving the ball. So they've now gone back to the original ball, so Brenda needn't have bothered <laughs> with her box. Anyway, all is right with the world, and Jaden Seals runs in again outside the off-stump this time, fuller length, and left alone by Luke Proctor. 19 for one. We're in the... Eighth over. Remember, we have another 43 overs to go after this. An hour to go till T. So, could potentially be a late one, but as I say, I rather do feel that Adrian's right and that light might be an issue later on. Seals doesn't exactly race back to his mark. There's a little chat with Tom Haynes in there at mid off. And he's in round the wicket bowling to Proctor, full and driven by Proctor through the covers for four. That's a gorgeous shot from Luke Proctor. Crosses the rope, just quite close to the scoreboard to our right, on which the flags are flying. And 6.4 in this over now for Luke Proctor. He goes to 14 in Northamptonshire to 23 for one. He's had a bit of nick, Matt, because he made 100 against uh, Oxford. Oxford students in the game... It was supposed to be a three-day game. In fact, they got a day and a bit because of the weather. But uh, Northampton did have a useful, more or less a full day's batting. And Luke Proctor made a very solid century, which is just what you want at this time of the year. He faces this next ball from Seals and just drops the bat on it. Runs out square of the wicket in the offside. Out to point, and that's the end of the over. Successful one productive one as far as Northamptonshire were concerned notwithstanding Henry Crocombe's heroics on the uh, the awning it's 23 for one 14 to Proctor and four to Justin Broad and four overs from Seals have brought in one for 14 two maidens in those but it is getting just a little bit gloomy again it is I think we've got a change of bowling um, I think Ollie Robinson having bowled his four overs is out of the attack, and we're going to get a bit of Finn Hudson Prentice. I mean, what, what, what do you make of that, uh, Matt? Um, a little bit surprised, if I'm honest. I probably would have kept um, kept Ollie going uh, from the top end. Um, it, obviously, Finn um, had had a great, good year last year with the bat, and is a extremely competent all-rounder. Um, so he'd be eager to to get the ball in hand down the hill here at Hove. But uh, personally, would have liked to have seen Ollie. Um, Ollie bowl a little bit more, I thought, just towards the back end of that last over as well. Um, just started to get into the ball to carry through to uh, to Simpson really well. Um, and, um, yeah, a, a little bit surprised, if I'm honest, but um, let's wish Finn all the best. Obviously, he's going to be keen to get the ball in hand and start his uh, championship campaign off. A good season with the bat um, last year, as you were saying, Finn Hudson Prentice. Not quite so good with the ball. Uh, took 20 wickets, but at 47 and he's in now on bowls, and um, forward comes broad and plays straight back down the track. And there is no run. You're listening to live cricket on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms, Andrew Rad, and Matt Green, your commentary team here 
at what is now an overcast hove. And Andrew was saying uh, it, 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 the forecast was suggesting we were going to be dry, but these clouds look a little threatening now, I have to say. No, they're doing it. And always at hove, it can come in quite quickly uh, just off the sea. So it just be interesting to see what happens in the next five, ten minutes. Hudson Prentice. Got three slips in places in and bowls and... Uh, broad. Let's see if that's given us a leg by. The ball ends up at fine leg and it is signalled as a leg by. So there was a, a stifled appeal from uh, Finn Hudson Prentice, but the total goes up to 24 for one. Just going down the leg side, I think. Mm. Yes, it, 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 it wasn't a, a, an appeal that sort of had any Full sort of throated, confidence was about it? No. no, it wasn't. Um, so for the left-handed Proctor, I'm not sure he's faced a ball at this end, is he? Um, don't think he has, no. Um, so he's going to face Finn Hudson Prentice. Three slips, a point, cover mid-off, mid on mid-wicket, and a fine leg down in front of us. That's Jack Carson, hands in pockets. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls, and good, was a good pace there, Hudson Prentice, but a very confident leave by Luke Proctor and Simpson taking the ball around about his midriff, and there is no run. That's been really good carry from, from the top end of the game. It has. No, absolutely. And, and I guess one of the... I mean, they do a wonderful job down here, the Sussex ground staff, but the, the wickets have just been a little... Um, perhaps a little flat in the last couple of seasons, and I think they'll be glad to see a bit of pace uh, in the pitch as in comes Hudson Prentice. Bowls. And that's a lovely-looking shot by Proctor. No, he was chasing that one. That's four runs beautifully played. Overpitched by Hudson Prentice and drilled away through extra cover by Luke Proctor. That's the shot of the day so far for me. He goes to 18 and Northamptonshire to 28 for one. Great shot uh, from Proctor. I, I remember watching him uh, back end of last year uh, with Radders um, ag against Somerset. And what really struck me there is when he was really in good form was just how quickly he, he moved forward and back. And the, the six um, against Seals, the, sh the short ball moved really quick and anything to capitalise on the front foot. He's, he's, he's moved extremely well, so looking like a really positive uh, start to Proctor's season. Hudson Prentice in bowls, and he lifts the bat high out of the way through to John Simpson, no run. I was just interested in, in Radders there, because we all do our own sort of research, but Radders looks like it might be on a slightly different level. He's actually got a lever arch file. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is known as the turquoise file of doom. Oh, go on. Because it, it usually... Um, it's obviously details lots of different aspects of Northamptonshire's season and the players and so on. And it usually gets fished out if I'm looking up for a, looking for, for a sort of an unwanted record. So that's what it's known as. Hudson Prentice in bowls and Proctor plays on the front foot into the covers, fielded by Carter. And there is no. It almost felt. I don't want to be a prophet of doom here, but it almost feels as if there's a bit of rain in the air. Um, no umbrellas up, so I hope I'm wrong. End of the over. 28 for one. Proctor on 18, Broad on 4. I think North Hampshire will be pleased with the way they've recovered here. Early season, 5 for 1 can easily become sort of, you know, 21 for 4. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you, know, you have to feel, as, as Matt was saying, you have to feel a bit for Emilio Gay to go in that manner. Caught behind down the leg side, albeit it's a terrific catch from John Simpson. But this is a big test, as we've been saying, for Justin Broad, who's only his seventh championship match. He made his only 50, in fact, in the last game of last season, 56 not out against Essex in Northamptonshire's season-ending victory over the side that finished second in the table. Sir Alistair Cook's final first-class appearance, of course. His seals over the wicket to Broad, who just jabs down on that, runs down into the slip cordon perfectly safely. Yes, I can tell you this is uh, the 135th championship match between Northamptonshire and Sussex, and fairly even honours really. Northamptonshire won 43, Sussex 38, 53 draws, but Northamptonshire have won five of the last six. That uh, winning run going back to 2017. Sussex's last championship win over Northamptonshire 10 years ago here at Hove in 2014 in Division 1. Here's Seals in bowls again to prop to a Broad, who's coming forward, pushes it back down the pitch, Seals bends to recover and there's no run. Sussex in fact, and they've got a chance to do something about this at the end of June, haven't won at Northampton for 20 years, wow. 2004. That's a good stat. So they will have that opportunity to do so, match starting the return between these two sides on the 30th of June, which will also be former players day at uh, Northampton. 
Well, I'm at a wedding that day. I know, yes, we have um, <laughs> super sub Tim Deller, I think, <laughs> is, uh, is in for you that day. Four slips as Seals runs away from us and bowls to broad outside the off stump. And that doesn't bounce as much. And it's very noticeable, I think, the point that both Adrian and Matt have been making during the, the last over or two, that the carry is very good from the top end, from the Cromwell Road end, not doing as much in terms of bounds from this end. But Seals allowing the batters very few opportunities. So when he did drop one short, Luke Proctor pulled it for six, got driven for four in the same over. But he's in his fifth over, one for 14 on Sussex debut, and he's in bowls to broad. Defensively forward, back down the pitch, fielded by Seals, who drops down a, a long right arm. Flicks the ball on to Robinson at mid-off, who throws it across to mid-on. I was very impressed, Andrew, when you were talking about the numbers um the appearance numbers for mm. Northamptonshire. So I'm very grateful to Jake, who's on the Sussex Press team, who sent me through the Sussex ones. I'll read out at the end of the over. Seals running in again to bowl to Justin Broad outside the off stump, just angling in towards off stump, but Broad knows where his stumps are and leaves that alone, taken by John Simpson, I would have thought, around about the line of middle and leg. Sorry, yes, carry on with the uh, with the numbers. Um, so Danny Lamb is number 789. Uh, Jaden Seals, number 790. John Simpson, 791. And County Cap, number 158. So thank you very much, Jake. You've um, done more research for me. Much appreciated. <laughs> Excellent. Good stuff. Here's... Seals running in again and bowls to Broad who turns that nicely off his hip, runs for him here as it goes down to fine leg, just a single. And means that Broad has nicked the bowling for the start of the next over. He goes to five, just that the straight drive for four of Ollie Robinson. And that's his second scoring shot. He's five. Proctor is 18 and Northamptonshire 29 for one. I've been impressed by Justin Broad, uh, Matt. I think, you know, he's... Two scoring shots, a boundary and a single. He's faced 29 balls, and that's what you want your opener to do, to, to soak up the pressure from the new ball bowlers. No, he's soaked up the pressure well. Hasn't uh, hasn't played any any full shots, really. And, uh, yeah, Broad, Broad looks extremely comfortable out there. Um, and so, uh, it, as well, he looks very composed um, in, the, in the way he's moving um, forward and back. And just got a good demeanour at the crease as Hudson Prentice is in. Bowls oh, and he's oh. just struck on the right hand there for a moment. I thought he'd nick that into the slip cordon. Um, I don't know if you're surprised by a bit of extra bounce, maybe. I think there's been a little bit of indifferent bounce from from the top end. I know, just in terms of the carry uh, through to Simpson, um, as we've seen some balls carry through. Um, Again, I thought Robinson's last ball looked to be carry through at real pace, and then some of them looked to die. So, it might indicate that the wickets may be a little bit too paced. Hudson Prentice wheels round at the Cromwell Road end. He's in on bowls and Broad works this one down to five. He's going to go for four runs. Now, I'm not sure if they're leg buys, whether that's come off the bat. No, indeed, they have come off the bat. So, Broad picks up another boundary. He goes to nine and Nottinghamshire to 33 for one. I guess any groundsman and Ben Gibson um, was saying just how hard it's been here at Hove with how wet it's been. And I'm sure that's something that's been replicated across the country with groundsmen throughout the winter. They'll be desperate for some dry weather. And I think the problem is as well that the water table is just so high yeah. everywhere. Though I'm sure I heard somewhere this week they're talking about water shortages in the summer. I mean, that is bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. In comes Hudson Prentice. Bowls. And that's going to be four more. But that was an involuntary shot by uh, Justin Broad. He's got a big thick edge on that. That could have gone anywhere. And it's run down to fine leg for four more. He goes to 13. So they look very secure. All of a sudden, there's a couple of uncertain shots from the Northamptonshire opener. Nonetheless, he goes to 13. Northamptonshire to 37 for one. That would be the, just the, the one thing from watching Broad. Um, is just when he's getting into the ball on the front foot, he really needs to commit and make sure he gets right into the ball. Sometimes um, a little bit caught on the crease. Although he's made good decisions when to go forward and back, just in terms of his body movement, he needs to really ensure that he's taking his head in, into the line of the ball. 
Bats and Prentice in bowls. And I always have to pick up on what you were saying there, Matt. He took a stride down the pitch then drove that back to Hudson Prentice who fielded off the own bowling no run. No, it's really important you do that as a batter, um, especially in early season um, when the pitches can be a little bit slower, uh, too paced, is that when you've committed to what length the ball is, is you're always taking your head and making sure your weight's, weight's going forward towards the ball. You don't want to be keeping your weight caught on the back leg or in, in the middle. So that's when you can bring bring uh, fielders and especially slip fielders into play. Got some prejudice in again. Bowles Broad lets that one go outside the off stump taken by Simpson. Good bounce there and good pace from uh, Finn Hudson Prentice. Total remains 37 for one for those just joining us. Sussex winning the toss, electing to bowl first. Early success, uh, Jaden Sills picking up his first wicket in Sussex Colours. Gay caught down the leg side by John Simpson, also making his debut for Sussex. But these two have added 32 now for the second wicket. So again, the cloud rather seems to roll into Hove. He's got a little gloomy again as in comes Hudson Prentice bowls and let go outside the off start by Justin Broad. There is no run. End of the over. 37 for one. Eight runs coming off of that Finn Hudson Prentice over. He's bowled two overs. No maidens, no wicket for 12. And just to mark your card, um, T will be taken at 4.35. And we'll await to see uh, what, what cake we're bought here, if any. Well, yes. Depends I, how good we've been. So it? if you're listening at home, you probably need to put the kettle on with about 25 par, something like that. I'll just give it a chance to steep before they, they actually leave the field for tea. One bit of good news. Uh, they're playing at Headingley in Division 2. Right, and the other matches actually got underway, albeit rather late. And now we have a change of bowling from this end, the south stand end, and Danny Lamb is going to have a little bowl. He's yes. one of the three Sussex debu uh, debutants in this match, former Lancashire player, of course. Right arm, medium pace, and John Simpson has brought him into the attack with three slips, bowling to the left-handed Proctor, and that's down the leg side, and Proctor gets everything out of the way to make sure there's no little kiss off the glove. A little bit of a Larry Loosener down the mm. leg side from Danny Lamp. Very handy cricketer. You would feel a good signing again for for Sussex. Justin Broad, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because those of us that have been fortunate enough to watch and cover county cricket over a long period of time as Lamb is in bowls again, just back of a length on leg stump, worked into the onside by Proctor, but there's no run. You know, the, the history of the game is littered with players that have just been given an opportunity in the first game of the season, or the first couple of games in the season has taken it and really kicked on with their career. And saying about this being a challenge for Justin Broad, but it's also a huge opportunity for him. And for sure. If he does hang around, make some runs here. Non-strikers end at the moment as Lamb's in bowling to his captain Proctor, Props forward, pushes it out into the offside. And there's no run. Broad obligingly picks the ball up and lobs it back to the field. And I can think of one or two coaches mm. of a slightly older vintage. Don't do that. Including the, the late, great Brian Reynolds, who would not be impressed by that. I guess Lamb and Proctor would know each other from Lancashire yes, days. Yes, I'm sure they, they probably would. Although Proctor's been, I say, been away from Lancashire for a while now. Here's Lamb in bowls to... Proctor, who on drives, goes up to Ollie Robinson at mid on, who sends back oh, a rather loose return that John Simpson would not massively have appreciated, holds up his hand in apology. Yeah, Neil Broad, born in South Africa, product of Rondebosch Boys High, some cricketers have come out of there, but probably tennis fans will know his father, Neil Broad, hmm. won some I think doubles player, wasn't he, predominantly, his... Lamb again, bowling on leg stump to Proctor, gets across inside the line, works it out into the onside, fielded to at square leg, and there's no run. Tom Haynes there, just having a little chat with the umpire. Yeah, just looking, Danny Lamb made his Lancashire debut in 2018, so he may not know no, that Proctor, Proctor would have. Proctor would have gone by then. Born in Preston. Here's Lamb in, a bustling run up, bowls to. Proctor, who plays defensively, back down the pitch. Lamb fields off his own bowling. Tidy start then for Danny Lamb, a maiden. His first over in Sussex Colours. And Northamptonshire, 37 for one. Put into bat with Broad on 13. 
Proctor on 18. If you're just joining us, the man out, Emilio Gay, caught down the leg side. Very good catch by John Simpson off Jaden Seals in his second over. He was out for five at that stage. It was five for one. And just the sky's getting a little brighter, which is good news. Dean, who's listening over in Cambodia. So we've had Cambodia <laughs> and Honduras. <laughs> Uh, he says, nice to hear you again. For us abroad, can you let us know of the changes at Sussex? I'll, I'll, I'll rattle through that uh, in this over, which is going to be bowled by Finn Hudson Prentice into his third over. Figures of no wicket for 12. He's coming into bowl to the right-handed uh, Justin Broad. He's in a miles and Broad lets that go outside the off-stump taken by Simpson. And there is no run. So the changes uh, for Sussex. John Simpson, the wicket-keeper, batsman and skipper, is in the side. Um making his debut. Jaden Seals, the West Indian quick bowler, 22-year-old, who's picked up the only wicket so far, and Danny Lamb. So they're the, uh, the, the, the three new arrivals, and they're all playing in this match, Dean. As Hudson Prentice in again. It is getting lighter in and bowls, and Broad is cautiously forward, sort of half forward, placed a backward point, fielded by Carson, and there is no one. Departures during the winter, the Left-handed opener Alior has moved along the south coast. He's now at Hampshire. Uh, George Garson has moved. He's gone to Warwickshire. Um, Jamie Atkins is no longer uh, with the club. His contract wasn't renewed. Apart from that, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's the only changes here at Sussex. Hudson Prentice again. Three slips go down. Uh, in and bowls to a broad who takes his hand off the bat and plays uh, into the leg side fielded by Carter and there is no runs it seems when you see somebody wicket keeps regularly when you see them in the field it seems slightly odd but that's the role that Ollie Carter will be playing this season and he's playing in this match I suspect that if Chetish or Pajara were fit um, then Ollie Carter wouldn't be playing in this game and I think Carter will bat at four Pujara we understand is still in India He's got a back problem. Sussex don't think it's too serious, and he should be back for the next game. Hudson Prentice in bowls, brought nicely forward, and good cricket all round, actually. Smartly fielded uh, in the covers by Tom Haynes. And there is no run. Nice looking shot, though, by Broad. Uh, I think good point you make, actually, Andrew. You know, I think. I, I, you know, it's a horrible sort of football term, isn't it? But, you know, you've got the shirt. Yeah, you know, absolutely. He, he comes in, he makes runs against a decent Sussex attack early season. He's suddenly staking a claim. As in comes Hudson Prentice down the hill from the Cromwell Road in bowls to Broad, who works this one down towards fine leg. John Simpson goes running after the ball, but it reaches uh, fine leg and Danny Lamb before he can get there. And it's one more to Justin Broad. He goes to 14, 38 for one. As Andrew was saying, there's a decent-sized crowd, really, for you know the, the 5th of April. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's not cold out there. It's no. not the sort of day when you would imagine the duffel coats come out. No. But it's it's not the best day for watching cricket. No. But there's a there's a good smattering all around the ground. Is it the, is it the end of the tax year today? Or the start of the new tax year? I'm never really sure. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls and... Proctor plays languidly and easily into the onside, fielded by Tom Haynes. There is no run, end of the over, 38 for one. Proctor is on 18, Broad on 40. You wince then, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you can what, tell the taxi. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can tell the self-employed one in the box, can't you? The one I was I was thinking about, and I'm not equating the two, obviously, is, is uh, in 1984, uh, Richard Williams, Chippy, uh, was... I think went down with flu and missed the opening game of the season against uh, Warwickshire uh, at Edgbaston. And the young chap came up from the seconds, played a couple of first-class games before that, and uh, made 100. And uh, nearly 32,000 runs later for Northamptonshire, Rob Bailey retired. His lamb in, starting a fresh over to Broad, who nibbles at that. It goes off an edge into the ground just in front of third slip it was a full shot from broad but i suppose the only thing is you can say he played it with softish hands mm -hmm. and it bounced in front of the slip fielder but lamb finding the edge yeah bailey made a, a very very good hundred and uh, he's still go. he is at the top of north Amplitude's list of run scores across all formats just over thirty-one thousand runs here's lamb in again bowls to broad a little bit more time 
This time he comes in behind it, plays it out onto the onside, runs out to mid-wicket and there's no run. He stays on 14 and Northamptonshire on 38 for one. I already like Danny Lamb because he marches back to his mark. Yes, he, he gets on with the I, game. I don't he? like it when people, you know, they amble back, but Lamb is, is, is you know, walks briskly back. There he is again. He's just this sort of bustling run-up as well as he bowls outside the off stump and Broad thought about just trying to play a little back foot punch and in the end thought better of it. And it goes through to John Simpson. I've always thought on this ground, uh, you've got those blocks of flats. That would just be such a great place to live, oh, wouldn't yeah. it? Look yeah. over, the, over the ground. I remember yeah. another Sussex ground, well, sadly not there anymore, but uh, when we used to stay, go on holidays to Hastings. Mm. Here's Lamb in again, bowls to Broad. Drops a bat on that, goes square of the wicket in the offside, and there's no run. When we used to stay in one of those sort of boarding houses or private hotels, guest houses, whatever, and those big old Victorian houses yeah. around the old central ground at Hastings, and you could watch the cricket from there as, as we used to do from, from time to time. And I said, I know when we've been on commentary before, Adrian, it's just one of my favourite cricket no. grounds, and so sad to. Yeah, I think it's no longer there. Here's Lamb in again, bowl short to Broad, who pulls nicely. He's not going to get four for it. It goes down to long leg, and he's going to pick up a couple. So two runs to Justin Broad. He goes to 16 or 45 balls, and Northampton should have 40 for one. And as Adrian was saying, so far, you think Northampton should are probably going to be slightly the happier of the, the two sides at the moment. Definitely. Particularly with a, I say, with a makeshift opener. And here is Broad. One strike to Lamb, and he shot. forces off the back foot. That's a gorgeous shot, and that's one of the best shots he's played, I would suggest, in his first-class career. That was a little back foot punch, and it raced away through the covers for four to the pavilion. Nobody moved. It takes Justin Broad. Into the 20s, he's 20 in Northamptonshire at the end of the over, 44 for one. That was a lovely shot. Fantastic shot, just on the tops of his toes. Uh, and you can see um, just players growing in confidence as well, just from spending time uh, time at, at the crease. But it's a really good point both are making about Broad taking the opportunity. And I'm sure on the Sussex side as well, Ollie Carter will be thinking exactly the same. Uh, obviously, he's seen Simpson come in and take the gloves, um, Pajara, um, as Adrian said, uh, still in India. And I'm sure Ollie would be licking his lips in, uh, as Hudson Prentice is in down the hill and bowls and just into, um, just into the onside. I'm sure knowing Ollie quite well, um, that he would be relishing the opportunity to get out there and back today and not prove people wrong. So he's clearly a player that, that, that's rated highly here at Sussex, but He's seen Simpson come in and take the gloves, and I really hope um, he's a top lad, and I really hope he, you know, he makes a good contribution uh, in this game. Um, I'm indebted to Andrew Rayburn. Hello, Andrew's listening um, up in Hawley, I presume. He may be there, Andrew. I'm not too sure, but uh, in comes Hudson Prentice bowls. Let go by Potter outside the off stump, and he says, um, oh, if I can find the, the message. Here we are. He says, I'm listening in. Neil Broad, who is presumably Justin's father, uh, won Olympic silver with Tim Henman at the 1996 Atlanta Games. So, I think um, he won six or seven ATP mm, tour titles, something so like that. So, obviously a very decent yeah. uh, cricketer. And Graham, so thank you, Andrew, and great to hear from you, and look forward to catching up with you during the summer. Uh, Graham Barber's been in touch. In comes. Um, Hudson Prentice down the lakeside, not a great delivery, well taken by Simpson, there is no run. He says, hi Adrian, uh, yes, the last day of the tax year is today. <laughs> great here, county cricket again, come on Sussex, Graham, who's a chartered accountant, <laughs> off offering his services to Matt. No, not really, that's not true. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Graham, for getting in touch last, last day of the tax year. Be a few people sort of frantically yes. filling in their returns. Uh, the sun's coming out again, which is very good news. In comes Hudson Prentice around the wicket bowls. Oh, well, that's a better delivery. And Proctor played forward slightly uncertainly. The ball just dribbles in front of him. 
there is no run. If you'd like to join our conversation, please do so. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk, or you could tweet us at uh, BBC Sussex Sport, or at Old Man Rad, or at Matt Is Green, and uh, well, the, the message will find its way to us somehow. Uh, Northamptonshire 44 for one, having been asked to bat first. Lost Emilio Gay when the score was on five, but these two have added 39 for the second wicket. Hudson Prentice now in sunshine in a bold, and Proctor clips this one nicely away through mid wicket. Ollie Robinson is in hot pursuit, but he can't do anything about preventing uh, a second run. And Proctor moves to 20, Northamptonshire to 46 for one. If you're listening, Graham Irwin, um, and I know sometimes the scorer do listens to us. Um, well done on the scoreboard. Loving it. Um, from someone who made an absolute mess of things last year. <laughs> I'm very I don't know what you've done, but there's, so, there's something different about the scoreboard, and it means I can read it. So it's that's lovely. great. It is very nice and, and clear. And I, it's a, there's a difference of opinion about whether you should put the balls up there. We'll come on to that in a sec. In comes Hudson Prentice. Balls let go outside the off stump by uh, Luke Proctor. It is the end of the over. 46 for one. Proctor on 20. And Broad also on 20. Hudson Prentice, four overs, not for 15. Sorry, Andrew. No, it was a couple of years ago, uh, Northamptonshire's board, which is very similar to this one in terms of the, the, the layout, also had the number of balls faced um, for uh, ch championship matches. And a Northamptonshire player, who I, I won't name, but asked them <laughs> if they could not put the number of balls faced because he said on one particular occasion when he was quite rightly in terms of the match situation playing a a sort of a long rear guard innings and, and you know facing an, a number of balls a lot of balls for not that many runs um, he said it, it felt he made him feel sort of uneasy and tense and whether he should be getting on with it so they they don't put the number of balls up here's lamb starting a fresh over to broad who's looking for runs again turns it out into the onside but picks out the man at mid wicket and there's no run ollie robinson at mid off is going through his limbering up routine and See, Jaden Seals is as well, so maybe they're going to come back each for a little burst before tea. We shall see. So, yeah, players, obviously, those that notice these things, some don't. I know, don't even look at the board very much, but some can find it distracting. Here's Lamin again, bowls to Broader again, Go plays that little back foot punch. This time, doesn't get hold of it as well, doesn't time it as well, but gets a single out into the covers. Takes... Justin Broad up to 21, moves ahead of his captain and Northamptonshire to 47 for one. One thing I haven't encountered much of today as one does wheel its way around the ground. I've seen that many seagulls. <laughs> when, I, when I do my 9.30 piece from uh, Seaside Grounds for BBC Radio Northampton, because being a landlocked county, they always love it if they've got sort of seagulls in the background as it creates a bit of a, a bit of atmosphere. Here's Lamin again, bowls, and that's edged by oh, Proctor. Shot. And it went into the slip cordon. I thought it maybe just bounced in front. I think that's bounced in front of one and over. The way James Coles is reacting, Yeah, I, I wonder if that was a chance. It turned him round. It got a thick outside edge. It flew into the slip cordon, and it's a question of whether it quite carried. He's not out anyway, but a little hard to tell from here let's have a look on the, the replay i think it bounced in front bounced just short of third slip his been out if that would have hit his lamin again bowling to proctor who turns it out to mid wicket and there's no run yes because proctor wasn't absolutely sure where it had gone or whether it had gone through the slip cordon and taken a couple of steps down and there was a shy at the stumps and as you say if, if it had hit it would have been interesting but uh, it didn't so it wasn't. 47 for one. Still the three slips in place as Lamb comes in and bowls to Proctor, turns it away just behind square on the leg side. Plenty of time to come through for another single. Proctor to 21 and Northamptonshire to 48 for one. Scoreboard very efficient. It is, isn't it? They're right on there. You can tell it's the first day of the season, can't you? Absolutely on the, on the mark. <laughs> So, um, you could you could actually do a league table, couldn't you, of, uh, of scoreboards around scoreboard. the country, the, the good ones and the, the ones that sometimes leave a little to be desired. Here's Lamin again, bowling to Shot. Broad, full, driven up to mid-off, but well fielded by Ollie Robinson. 
beat the hand of Lamb, goes up to Robinson, who smartly to the ball and cuts off any possibility of a single, and that's the end of another Danny Lamb over. Three overs, two maidens, no wicket for eight, and Northamptonshire are 48 for one. Proctor is 21, Broad is 21, and we've got about half an hour to go till tea. Nice message from Ollie Robinson's dad, who's been in touch. Ian, hello Ian, lovely to hear from you. Thanks for your message. He said, I'm glad to see the cricket season underway at Hove, watching it live and listening in Florida. Lucky you. I bet it's warmer in uh, Florida. Pretty lovely this time of year. We ought to get a warm map, you. you know, with, with so far yeah. today we've had Honduras, Cambodia and Florida. And Florida. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to catching up in a couple of weeks, Ian. It's very good to hear from you and... Um, Good to see Ollie out on the field as well, and he, he looked to be in good, good rhythm when he bowled his opening spell of four overs. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls, Proctor is forward, and right on cue he plays it to Ollie Robinson, who's eagerly in from mid on and fields, and there is no, I bet not say anything about I bet everything Ollie does now, I'm say he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> what a throw by Ollie Robinson. <laughs> 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 I tell you what you could do. You could get uh, you could get those clocks that they have on the, the sort of the old newsroom wall. So you've got you know up on the wall Honduras, Florida. Yeah, we should, shouldn't we? Eastbourne. <laughs> yeah, you know we've had Bex Hill, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, all sorts. Hudson Prentice in bowls. Oh, just takes his hand off the bat. He steers it to mid wicket. Haynes is in. Oh, they've had it hit the stumps. I think he was gone. It, it was a risky single from Luke Proctor. He played it backward of square, so it was the call of Justin Broad, who was running to the danger end. Tom Haynes was very smartly round from square leg, and my feeling we're in no position to see was if it had hit, I reckon that might have been out. Yeah, no, definitely think um, think that would have been out, but it's really interesting. You would say North Hans really controlling this game um, in this opening opening hour of the, of the championship season, and just a, 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 little, a poor run there. And all of a sudden they're 48 for two, and, and then the game can change. It's really important now that you know these little one percent moments in games that, that either side to put themselves in a good position. They need to keep focusing and doing the basics overly w to the highest of their uh, their potential. And you can tell that Proctor knew it wasn't a great run because he came down the ran, walked down the entire length of the pitch to <laughs> sort of say sorry. Yeah. Justin Broad. Um, in comes. Had some Prentice bowls and Broad is forward. Not that it can unsettle a player, can't it? But Broad right behind that played it into the offside. There is no. Run. So do you think? Do you think Proctor set off for that run without really getting the call? Because it was Broad's call. I mean, Broad yeah, was at well, the nine strikers end. It, yeah, it looked to me he, he just set off. I think. Yeah. Um, was my my feeling about that. But anyway, all's well that ends well. Yeah. He's just wandering down below. Well, Hampshire's new batting and bowling coaches, Greg Smith and Rory Kleinveld. Who's the guy with the hood up? That's Rory Kleinveld. Look, he's about to climb Mount Everest. <laughs> In comes Hudson Prentice bowls, let go outside the off stump. There is no run. He's wrapped up as if it's a bitterly cold day. Well, I suppose if he's just just flown in from Cape Town, perhaps, Maybe. It, perhaps it is. Yeah. But uh, it's not. It's not. Co it's one thing it isn't today. It isn't cold. No. Um, it's interesting. You were talking earlier. Adrian, about uh, the sort of the, the cardinal sin of overrate, and of course, yes. it was when North Aperture missed out on promotion one year through having a slow overrate on one day at Trent Bridge when Alex Wakeley was off the field and Rory Kleinvelt was acting captain and rather let things slip. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls forward, comes Broad, plays it back down the track. There is no run. So he will, <laughs> he better than anybody will. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll be keeping a little eye on that one and saying that we don't want to get into that sort of uh, business again. I'm actually looking at the, at the scoreboard because I'm just looking at the over rate, which is I haven't got anything next to it at all. So I think we have to assume it's even. But they've got a, I'm presuming EXT is extras. Yes. That's, that's, that's a nice addition. I like that. One extra so far. That was a leg by. In comes Hudson Prentice. Bowls and right in behind that is Broad plays into covers. There is no run. The, 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 the cloud seems to be drifting away. It's a lot brighter coming in from the southwest, which is great news. And Northamptonshire have recovered well here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. You may be watching via the Sussex Cricket Club live stream. They are now 49 for one having at one stage been five for one. If you'd like to drop us an email, sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk. You can keep yourself Adrian Harms, Andrew Rad, and Matt Green company. And Northamptonshire, I think, will be very pleased with the way things have gone. 
No, I think they'd be really happy. Um, and again, I think what we've got half an hour, just or just under half an hour now till the uh, the tea break. Here's Lamin starting a fresh over and bowls to Proctor outside the off stump. That's a little nibble at it. And Lamb is going up for an appeal for a court behind. There's absolutely no interest from behind the stumps at all, from Simpson or the slip cordon, but Danny Lamb must have heard something as the ball passed the bat, but clearly not an edge. Proctor has a little prod of the pitch. Uh, just, just a really key sort of, uh, yeah, just under half an hour passage of play now, and I think if, if Northamptonshire can, can go in just one wicket down, um, going into the evening session. I think they'd definitely be the, the happier of the two teams. Um, and I've mentioned it a little bit before, but you have to think there have been really good bowling conditions this afternoon, and there has been a lack of uh, movement in the air with it, with this Kookaburra ball. Here's Lamb, in again, bowls to Proctor, who's drawn into playing that one, and it goes past the outside edge into the gloves of Simpson. Applause from first slip for the bowler. Asking a few questions, Danny Lamb, having, as we say, made the move close season down to Sussex from Lancashire. Number 10 on his back. And running in again to bowl to another Lancastrian in Luke Proctor. That's outside the off stump. And goes through to John Simpson. A pleasant afternoon if you are out there watching cricket as I say it's it's not the the warmest but it's certainly not cold it's not an unpleasant day for watching cricket no and plenty of people sitting out in the open the open stand over to our left as Lamb is in bowls on the leg stump turned away by Proctor and he's going to get a single down to long leg fielded in front of the indoor school and that's one more to Proctor he goes to 23 and brings the 50 up for Northamptonshire. 50 for one. And we're in the 18th over as a light aircraft flies overhead. Yeah, I mean, Jaden Sills is down using a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, well, as I say, it's. it's I think Rory Kleinfeld has, has not quite. His, his no. apparel doesn't quite match the conditions, it's fair to say. Here's Lamin again, bowls to. Broad, a little bit hurried, like a sort of a jabbing defensive stroke out into the offside. But there's no run. More pigeons than seagulls in evidence, I think, probably this afternoon so far. It's supposed to be going to get warmer, but quite windy tomorrow, yes, they were saying. Is. Yeah, yeah, I think very strong winds, but it's just up, up to sort of 20, 21 yeah. degrees. From the south, so that'll be coming over, over the top of us, won't it? I think, yes, it will. In the south stand. Here's... Oh, that's a beauty from Lamb, and it beats Justin Broad outside the off stump. Goes through to Simpson. Applause from around the crowd. And you can tell the Sussex players are just conscious of trying to get uh, get round between their overs. They were yes. almost as soon as that ball had settled in John Simpson's gloves, they were trotting, starting to trot down to the other end to start the, the other over, the fresh over. At the end of that one, 18 gone. It's 50 for one, 23 to Proctor, 21 to Broad. So we have another 33 overs to bowl in the day, which is a good couple of hours. So we're not that much adrift, are we, really? No. Tea in about 20 minutes. Hudson Prentice running in down the hill from the Cromwell Road. It bowls to Proctor, who's struck on the pad. There's a stifled appeal. The ball one rolls out into the offside. Proctor clearly didn't think he was out, and he was wandering away. And there is uh, no run. I, I just wonder whether we might see a burst of Robinson and Seals before lunch, Matt. Before um, lunch, before tea, even. I, I would like to think so, um, especially um, with the score score as is. Um, you'd want one of either of your strike bowlers uh, to be bowling or or bowling in tandem, ideally. Hudson Prentice, big block of flats behind him, runs in and bowls again. Proctor lets that go outside the off. I just. So it's, it's just an observation. I, I just think that the, 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 the Sussex coaching staff, uh, James Kirtley, who's the bowling coach, would just be a little disappointed that they haven't, these openers haven't had to play, or the number one and number three haven't had to play at that many deliveries. No, and again, it's 
they've been easy leaves as well. It hasn't been leaves where the batters had to really think. They've been balls that are, have started wide of off stump and carried on going, or or balls on on length that they they've been able to leave quite comfortably. Some apprentices again around the wicket bowls Proctor. That's better on Proctor is forward, plays to mid off, and Jaden Sills comes running in and says to Ollie Carter, "You can leave that one to me." And uh, Seals Fields, there is no run. Ollie Carter, who spent a second winter out in uh, Newcastle in uh, uh, Australia, just north of Sydney, I think Newcastle is. Yeah. Um, I think he skipped the side up there. He's had two very successful winters. We did have a gentleman who got in touch last year from the Newcastle Cricket Club, so they may be listening over in Australia. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls, and again, another leave. And Proctor's just able to comfortably get the bat out of the line through to the keeper. Simpson, there is no run. And that prompts a debate between John Simpson and Tom Alsop, who will be one of his sort of trusted lieutenants in the side. One of the older players in the side is Tom Alsop. And just a little chat there, and I just wonder whether that might have been about a, a fielding change or maybe a change in bowling. Uh, he's 28 now, is uh, Tom Alsop. As Hudson Prentice is in again. Bowls. Proctor is hit on the pad. That looks like a decent shout, but I'm a uh, ball to him. Just a, a shake of the head. He didn't even shake the head. He sort of looked away as if yeah. to say, no, nope, not out. No. Wasn't just really playing. interesting how, sorry. He how wasn't playing, was he? I, I, I just wonder if height was the thing that maybe saved him there. Um, Nick Davis has been in touch. Hello, Nick. He says, um, uh, great to hear the commentary again means that summer is on its way. I'm very optimistic about Sussex's chances this season in the Championship. Fingers crossed the weather can stay dry over the next few days and Sussex can try and get off to the perfect start. I can see, talk about bowling changes, Jack Carson is warming up down below us, the off spinner. So maybe they're going to, yeah, maybe that's not a bad thing. A couple of overs before tea to get the spinner on and something a little different. In comes Hudson like Prentice bowls. Proctor is forward, plays into the offside, there is no run. End of the over, North Hampshire, 54, maiden over from Finn Hudson Prentice, six overs, uh, one maiden, no wicket for 16, Proctor on 23, Broad on 21. That LBW shout wasn't a bad shout because Proctor wasn't offering a, a stroke, um, hit him outside the line, but obviously if uh, not, not offering, if the umpire felt it was going to hit my thinking and just watching it on the replay, I think it was probably just about going over the top, certainly enough for the umpire to be guessing, which obviously they're not going to guess. So it was not out, but it was worth definitely worth an ask, I think. But from Northampton's point of view, as you say, they haven't had to to play. It'd be interesting to see the stats, and I'm sure they will be available. But my sense is just commentating the number of times we've said leaves it alone outside the off stump. No, I agree. Go on, talk about something else. Anyway, here's Danny Lamb. Three slips in place, and he bowls to Broad who leaves it alone outside the off stump and it goes through to John Simpson. Just bring you up to date with what's happening elsewhere. As I say, we, we've been quite fortunate here. Not that many games playing. I think there's of the matches around the circuit, the nine games, I think there's play in four or five. In Division 1, three complete washouts today at Durham, Kent and Lancashire. As Lamb is in bowls to Broad, who leaves it? alone outside the off stump and it goes through to Simpson. At Trent Bridge at T, Essex 174 for four. Dean Elgar made 80. And at Edgbaston, the Bears against the Pairs. And Worcestershire are 206 for two. Cashy 76 not out. Gareth Roderick made 68. So Worcestershire newly promoted, made a good start there. His lamb in bowls to Broad, who does have to play this one, works it into the onside. Carson Fields at mid wicket, and there's no run. In Division 2, no play today at Derby, between Derbyshire and Gloucestershire. At Lords, Glamorgan 240 for two against Middlesex. Sam Northeast 126 not out. Billy Root made 67. Kieran Carlson is 41. Not out. Good player. Yeah. Like Carlson. Here's Lamb. Running in again. Away from us. Bowls very full. Driven nicely by Broad. And Ollie Robinson goes down slightly in installments. But he did what needed to be done. Stopped the ball and keeps it to a single. So one more to Broad who goes to 22. And Northamptonshire to 51 for one. And... 
as I mentioned a little while ago, they are playing at Headingley. Just managed to get underway there. Yorkshire against Leicestershire. Leicestershire batting are 27 for no wicket. And here's Lamb in bowling to Proctor. That's on his hip, and Proctor loves it there. Just work it round the corner all day. Goes down to deep square for a single. Takes Proctor to 24, and Northampton should have 52 for one. Field changes over for the right-hander, Justin Broad, and as Adrian mentioned, Jack Carson is limbering up at mid-wicket, so maybe we're going to see, I was going to say almost the obligatory over of spin before an interval, but uh, we'll see. Here's Lamb in again, bowls to... Justin Broad, and that just maybe nip back a little bit off the seam. But Broad plays it down almost at his feet, and that's the end of the over. 24 to Proctor, 22 to Broad, Northamptonshire 52 for one. Yes, I just noticed at the end of the previous over that John Simpson went and had a chat to Ollie Robinson. I mean, that could have been, you know, Ollie would be one of the senior players in the side. That could have been a bit of a natter about bowling changes. Um, I wonder whether it might have been, do you fancy, a couple of overs before T. I saw Jaden Seals was warming up, but we are going to get some off spin. So Jack Carson's warm up obviously caught the attention of the skipper. And we're going to get the Sussex off spinner uh, back into the side. Went away with the England Lions um, when they went to India uh, pre Christmas, did uh, Jack Carson. And any, you know, any off spinner, any spinner of any sort, really, um, Matt, I know these are not great spinning conditions, but anyone who can take wickets in the championship you know automatically people say well we, you might be able to play for England because it's not as if we're blessed with a lot of spinners at the moment no uh, not blessed with a lot of spinners and I think that was um, when we talk about the change of ball from uh, Duke to Kookaburra I think they, they did um, some a survey or um, some testing and, the, and it was said that the, the Kookaburra ball spun more um, than the Duke ball so they're obviously trying to introduce spin in, into the game um, and trying to expose players to, to spinning conditions as much as they can. In comes Carson, 23-year-old from Northern Ireland, in and bowls, first delivery to Proctor, who nudges, nurdles that one around the uh, corner down towards fine leg. Picks up a single, Tom Clark trots back in field, there is no run. Tom Clark, who was awarded um, an extension to his contract yesterday, he'll be very pleased about that. Take him through to 2026. Northampton should go to 53 for one, 25 Proctor, 22 to Broad. Live cricket here on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. Adrian Harms, Andrew Radham, Matt Green, your commentary team here today. Every ball, every game, uh, live on the BBC right through until the end of the season. In comes Carson, uh, over the wicket, bowls and clipped away very comfortably by Broad down to fine leg fielded there by Tom Alsop on Mortar Broad. He goes to 23, Northamptonshire 54 for one. Jack Carson with exactly 100 first class wickets. Um, he reached that milestone in the last game, was it the last game of last season? You need to check the figures. But he, he's got 100 wickets to his name. He's in and bowls. Proctor is forward. I thought for a moment he played that straight back to Jack Carlson, but in the end it was a perfectly safe shot. In terms of the field, there's a slip and a short leg. Ollie Carter with the rather dubious pleasure of standing in at short leg. And Tom Clark at slip. Carson in, bowls forward, comes prop to place very easily to mid-wicket footed by Haynes. There is no run. The rest of the field, there's a, a backward point sweeper on the cover boundary. Extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket and a deep backward square about 10 yards inside the boundary is uh, Jaden Seals. Carson again in the bowls, Proctor forward, again plays to Haynes at mid-wicket and there is no run. There is no question here that uh, I think Sussex do not want to be going in with a slow over rate because Paul Farbrace does not, he, he's very unhappy about that and they're really sort of getting through their overs quickly are Sussex. Carson in again, bowls, that's wide, cut away by Proctor, he's going to get a single to the uh, sweep on the cover boundary, who is James Coles, it is the end of the over, that looked relatively innocuous as far as Northamptonshire were concerned, it's the end of the over, 55 for one, and that single brings up the 50 partnership between Proctor on 26, 
Broad on 23 and after the early loss of Emilio Gay to Jaden Seals. I think full credit to Northamptonshire who batted very well here. Yep, this will be just the start to the season that Northamptonshire would have been hoping for with a bat. We were saying in these conditions there's always the danger that as happened to Northamptonshire last year at Kent, at Canterbury, it was a late start, it was all a bit familiar, late start, lost the toss, put in, in helpful bowling conditions, and were about 80-odd eight, uh, 80 for seven, and never really recovered, in a sense, never really recovered that season. Clipped away off his legs by Proctor, first ball of a fresh over from Danny Lamb, beats the dive at mid-wicket, but Ollie Robinson tracks back to retrieve, and there's a single... Proctor who goes to 27 and Northamptonshire to 56 for one. It's interesting to, you were saying about the Cookerborough ball and what they're trying to achieve. Northamptonshire's first match at home with it last year was against Kent the return and we'll come back to that in a second as Lamb comes in and bowls to Broad plays it square of the wicket in the offside and there's no run uh, and what was noticeable there was that the, the bowler that really <laughs> found it very much to his liking was the Australian uh, Wes Agar who bowled beautifully and took five wickets, bowled North Aperture out for 237 um, because he was used to, to bowling with it and it did very little for anybody else but he obviously knew how to bowl with the Cookerborough ball, it's what he was used to and it was a terrific exhibition, that's outside the off stump from Lamb, left alone by Broad and then when Kent batted, the North Aperture seamers could do nothing with it and they finished up getting 621, and I suppose you can say, well, okay, they achieved the aim of getting into the, getting the spinners on because young Alex Russell, young leg spinner, bowled 38 overs, six for 175, and only his second championship match. Here's Lamb, and again bowls to Broad, hit on the pad, decent-looking shout. What says Surrey Sangnaman? He says not out. Maybe just got himself outside the line. Mm. It looked to nip back. He's done that once or twice, Danny Lamb, hasn't it? He's just nipped the odd one back in, shaped it back in to the right-hander. Didn't look a bad shout, that, but I, I thought long and hard about it and said not out. Just playing slightly around his front pad. He was. He? Let's have a look at that on the, the replay. It's not a bad shout at all. Maybe just height, maybe just missing leg stump. Here's... Lamb in again, that's full, driven to extra cover by Broad, and there's no run. But that wasn't a bad shout at all. And then in the second innings, well, that would did offer a bit more resistance, got up to 369, but the damage by that stage had really been done. And Joe Denley, who's something of an occasional leg spinner these days, got through 49 overs. Mm -hmm. But um, it was an interesting match. Here's... Lamb in again, bowls to Broad, playing defensively back down the pitch, fielded by Lamb, and that's the end of another over, 56 for one, Proctor is 27, Broad is 23, we've got about six minutes to go till T, so probably two more overs. Yes, yeah, so I'll have to disappear in a bit and just do an update, so I'll leave you with Andrew and, um, and Matt, and we could add Ireland to our list of countries. Right. Um, loving the commentary here in Leitrim, L-E-I-T-R-I-M, I don't know if that's you pronounce it, Leitrim in Ireland, hoping not to see Lewis McNannis bat until at least tomorrow. <laughs> I've never known such a long batting lineup. He used to open for our school team over a decade ago, says Andrew. Well, so Lewis McManus, well, I don't know where that would have been, somewhere in Hampshire? I would have thought so, yes. Yeah, well, let, let us know, Lewis. We'd love to, well, listen, Lewis, Andrew, we'd love to know. Right, it's going to be Jack Carson who's going to carry on, and I'm going to leave you with... Andrew and uh, with Matt to talk through the over. That's Carson from the Cromwell Road end, round the wicket to the left-handed Proctor, who's defensively forward, back down the pitch. There's a slip in place and a forward short leg. And Tom Clark, who's hit slip, looks to be suggesting that maybe a silly point might not be a bad idea. But not there as yet. And here's Carson round the wicket. Bowls again, and that's a jaffa. That is an absolute jaffa. That's turned... It's beat the outside edge of Proctor's back and Simpson flicking off a bail. Proctor hadn't moved, but that turned. No, it definitely turned. And just Carson here, just using um, using the crease well as well. It's coming slightly wider and just inviting the batter as he comes in and bowls slightly quicker as well. That's outside um, the off stump this time. Proctor doesn't need to play it. 
But that one before, that really did rip. And beautifully bowled. They've got, a, as I mentioned, a slip and a four short leg just behind the square. As Carson is in again, bowls to Proctor, who stretches for that, reaches for that, plays it just in front of square on the leg side. And the man under the helmet, a backward short leg, retrieves. And there's no run. That's Ollie Carter under the lid. And Carson in again. Bowls slightly quicker ball, worked into the onside by Proctor. And this time he's going to get a single. It goes past the right hand of Ollie Carter. And they're able to come through for one. Takes Proctor to 28. And Northampton should have 57 for one. Put into bat. Play starting at three o'clock if you're just joining us. Northampton sure losing Emilio Gay for five. That was five for one. Back over the wicket goes Carson. Flights that one up to Broad, who is not to be tempted. Just runs it down off an angle bat to backward point. And that's the end of another over from Jack Carson. He's bowled two overs for four. And Northamptonshire at the end of the over, 57 for one, with Proctor on 28, Broad on 23. Now, clock on the scoreboard saying 4.32. So certainly one more over. I'd well, are we going to? What are we going to see? Are we going to see another little bit of spin just to try and get another over in? No, we're not. We're going to mm. see. We are. Who's, who's coming into the attack now? Tom Haynes, Tom yeah. Haynes is going to have a little bowl, a bit of dibbly dob. Mm. Quite an effective bowler, uh, Tom Haynes, with the keeper up and rattles through his overs uh, quickly. So they'll probably try and get this one in from Haynes and then another one from Carter one from so that they can yeah, try and get two before the two overs in before the break. That's really good. It's good, positive, enterprising cricket, isn't it, from, from Sussex under John Simpson. Really trying to keep the game moving. Like to see mm. that. Busy. So here's Haynes, round the wicket, bowling to Proctor. That's on leg stump. Turned away down to deep backwards square for a single. Proctor goes to 29 and Northampton should have 58 for one. So as Matt mentioned, this medium pace of Tom Haynes, keeper standing up, two slips in place, backward point. Uh, cover, the man who was sweeping on the cover boundary is now coming into the ring. And they've got a man on the drive now at short extra cover. Ollie Robinson at mid off. Mid on, as Haynes is in bowls to Broad, who's pushing forward out to the man at short extra, and there's no run. So they've now got a man on the drive on each side, a short mid wicket and a short extra. And maybe that's a sign that they just don't think it's doing an awful lot and just trying something different. And once or twice, Broad, balls outside the off stump, has just stretched a little bit for it, so it's not a bad ploy. Here's Haynes bowling full, driven, and smartly fielded off his own bowling by Haynes. Stays at 58 for one. No, I would definitely agree. Um, it, the, the ball hasn't has, has done nothing in the air um, and off the pitch. If anything, you would just say slightly too pace, but um, if anything, the, the conditions definitely favour him batting as, as Haynes comes in and bowls. Just playing around his front pad there, uh, broad into the onside to Carter. So we've got, what, two balls left. I'm not sure they're going to get another one in. It says 4.35 on the board. Depends which clock they're going by, of course. But that would be T. And I say the umpires are perhaps going on a, a, t a different timepiece elsewhere. Here's Haynes in bowls to Broad, who drives. And it's very smartly fielded by that man on the drive at short extra cover. So it's again already we're seeing Simpson just prepare to try something a little bit different. Put a bit of a doubt in the batter's minds, get them thinking. It's this double bluff, isn't it? That I know something you don't. Yeah. Here's Haynes. Will this be the last ball before T? It's outside the off stump. It's left alone by Justin Broad. And that is T. That is T on the first day of this 
County Championship Division 2 match between Sussex and Northamptonshire here at Hove. Play starting finally at 3 o'clock after some Herculean work by the ground staff here at Hove. And Northamptonshire put into bat by John Simpson, losing the wicket early on of Emilio Gay. Very well caught down the leg side by John Simpson off the bowling of Jaden Seals for five. The West Indian striking with his seventh ball for Sussex. But since then, Northamptonshire's makeshift opener, Justin Broad and the captain, Luke Proctor, have done a pretty good job. Really haven't had too many alarms. A couple of shouts for LBW, one that just turned Proctor round that he edged just in front of third slip and then might have been run out had the throw hit the stumps. Well, welcome back to Hove for the uh, evening session and the final 27 O's of the day here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Northampton. My name is Adrian Harms. Andrew Rad 
is my fellow commentator from BBC Radio Northampton, uh, Matt Green is our summariser today. The players are wandering back out. The sun is with us. If it stays like this, hopefully we'll get a good part of these 27 overs in, which is uh, great stuff. We must just say to Sussex Cricket Club, we've had the most wonderful Victoria sponge bought up. I don't know how you've resisted a bit of that, Matt Green. <laughs> Can I eat your bit? Of course. There's nothing on me. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm as thin as a rake. So I, I'm going to... But, uh, but Andrew was tucking into his. I've, yes, and I'm not thin as a rake, but um, <laughs> it's, it's very, very nice. And many thanks. And I, thanks also to Mark Weber, who, um, one of our colleagues, who suggested that Andrew Rad's Cake is an excellent indie band name. <laughs> so thank you. thanks for that, Mark. Um, so we're about to get underway. I haven't said my normal well done to uh, Jack, who's the guy here. It's a very small media team here at Sussex, and they do a brilliant job. And um, Jack operates the TV pictures and he does it throughout the season, and it's all working well today. So well done, Jack. Um, he'll have half an hour on the Amex tomorrow because the Albion are playing. But, uh, <laughs> but not today. He's concentrating on the screen. So well done to all the guys in the media team. And it's going to be Ollie Robertson who's going to open up after tea. We rather thought he might. Four overs, one made no wicket for nine. And he's coming running in um, in lovely weather. A bit of sunshine across the ground. In a bowls to Luke Proctor, who's forward and defends to mid-off. And there is no run, fielded by Jaden Seals. I've not spoken to Jade. I think we might speak to him tonight because he got a wicket. Uh, I love his enthusiasm in the field as well, so great to see him. Uh, Danny Lamb is warming up down below us. The field, three slips a point, cover mid off mid on, and two men set back on the leg side. There's a deep square and a fairly widish final. Jaden Seals, I reckon, is going to bowl because he's doing some sort of fairly vigorous warming up exercises as Robinson. He's back to his mark. He's bowling from the Cromwell Road end of the ground. He's in down the hill and bowls. And Proctor flicks this off the front foot down towards fine leg very quickly. And they're going to come back for two runs. That's good cricket, actually. The throw comes in. Good cricket all round. It was a nice looking shot by Luke Proctor. Good bit of fielding by Jack Carson, who got the throw in very quickly um, from sort of a deep backward square position. But Proctor hastened back for the second. He goes to 31. Northampton cheers to 60. One. Much of the conversation over the cake <laughs> at tea time uh, was about. I, I said I felt that Sussex had bowled too many balls. That they, well, I've got some stats on it in a minute from Andrew Rayburn about you know uh, allowing Northamptonshire to let too many balls go. And comes Ollie Robinson bowls wide of the off stump, taken by Simpson, no run. But some of the debate around was saying, well, yeah, that may be the case. But how much of this is due to the kookaburra ball and, you know, the feeling that it, it gets very, very difficult for seam bowlers. Um, but Andrew's been t in touch and he's done a bit of stats on this. So well done, Andrew. You, um, you must be sitting at home with having a nice free afternoon because he says of the leaves, 6% of Ollie Robinson's balls were left. That was 25. Jaden Seals, 13 from 30 is 43%. Hudson Prentice, 10 from 36 is 28%. In comes Robinson around the wicket bowls. Forward comes Proctor plays to mid off. There is no run. And Danny Lamb, six leaves from the 36 is 17%. So in total, um, Northamptonshire have been able to let go 28 of all seam deliveries. Uh, Andrew goes on to say, I'm not sure if that's any better or worse than usual. I don't know, really, to be honest. It was just a, a feeling that we felt that maybe um, there was some, some easy leaves. But that, that could be due to. Could be due to the Kookaburra ball. Yeah, could. It's, it's, it's interesting. So I don't actually know the stats. I'd be really interested to see the stats before and after. It would be. In comes Robinson. Round the wicket, bowls, and Proctor covers up and plays to mid off. There is no run. Just an observation on Ollie Robinson, who seems to be running in with decent rhythm and bowling around the wicket. Him, that's certainly making Proctor play there. In fact, I've, I've missed. He bowled a no ball. That was very, very bad of me. Sorry about that. 62 for one. I suspect that it might be just the perception that you know we were expecting because of the conditions, particularly the overheads. We we thought, you know, we ought to be doing a bit more than yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, um, probably right. <coughs> and and maybe that's just feeding into the narrative of what we've seen so far. Jaden Seals' warm up continues at mid on as in comes Robinson bowls. Proctor lets that one go, taken by Simpson, and there is no run. Yeah, and certainly a very interesting point we were making earlier on. I mean, there hasn't been there's been very little cricket around the country, but you'd have thought, you know, a, a wet spring so far. The bowlers, you know, I expected to you know see someone you know this week sort of eighty for seven. Yeah, no, definitely. We haven't seen that so far today in the few games that have been played. Robinson marches back up the hill. 
I'll run run through the scores at the end of the over, but it's Nottinghamshire have got amongst Essex a have little they? bit after a, a Essex made a very good start. Mm, you're my big mouth. <laughs> uh, Luke, Luke Proctor is now um, adjusting... Adjusting his dress, as he they say. Uh, yeah, I think he's adjusting his head guard, isn't he? He's, he, he's, um, he's doing something out there. He's, he's taking his gloves off. Uh, and that's given Sussex a chance to change the field as well because they've decided to move Danny Lamb a little finer down here and they moved Ollie Carter. Short ball. Yeah, to dig the, there's actually three men out on the lake side. Jack Carson needs to make sure he stays in front of square. But there are three men back for presumably a hook. Unless it's a bluff. Who knows? Here's Robinson. Bowls short. And Proctor just ducks underneath. And I think he's a bit too long in the tooth to fall for a trick like that. Is Luke Proctor. End of the over. 62 for one on Northamptonshire. Proctor is on 31 broad is on 23. Ollie Robinson, five overs, one maiden, no wicket for 13. Yeah, quick counter through what's happening elsewhere. In Division 1 at Trent Bridge, Essex, who were looking in pretty good shape at 170 for two, are now 197 for six. Um, and the man to do the damage is Dane Patterson, who's taken five of the six wickets to, port, to fall, 14 overs, five for 49 for the South African, who, if I remember rightly, doesn't like bowling with a new ball. Despite the fact that he, whenever I've seen him bowl with a new ball, he's always bowled pretty well with it, but he preferred apparently bowling with a, an older ball. Came on a second change today, and he's picked up five wickets, so good for him. Go through the rest of the scores in the second. E elsewhere, it's very much the batters on top. And here is Jaden Seals. Five overs, one for 15. Coming in for the start of a new spell from the... <laughs> from the south stand end. And the first ball is... Short, around the line of off stump, and broad as he's done a couple of times, just plays that little punch shot away through the covers for four. Beats the ring. There's nobody out there sweeping at the moment, and it races away to the front of the pavilion for four runs. So nice start to the session for Justin Broad, who goes to 27 in Northamptonshire, to 66 for one. In the other Division One match being played, they're off for bad light at Edgbaston, where Worcestershire 235 for two. Here's Seals. Three slips in place. Bowls wide outside the off stump and broad. Watches it into the gloves of John Simpson. So Worcestershire 235 for two. Cashy 95 not out. You don't want to go off for light at 95 not out, do you really, I suppose? And uh, Roderick, Gareth Roderick made 68. In Division 2 at Lords, Glamorgan 320 for two against Middlesex. Sam Northeast 100. And 73 not out. Kieran Carlson, 72 not out. Here's Seals running away from us and bowls. And again, that little punch shot for Broad. This time he doesn't meet, beat the man at extra cover. And there's no run. Stays at 66 for one. And at Headingley, uh, Yorkshire playing Leicestershire. Delayed start there. Leicestershire batting first are 75 for one. An early wicket there for Matt Milnes who removed Rishi Patel for 19. Marcus Harris is 30 not out. And Lee Kimber on 19. So that has brought you up to date here. North Amber just 66 for one as Seals is in bowls to Broad. Big appeal for LBW and he's out. He's gone this time. And Broad just pushing. Again, not really getting the front foot to the pitch. And... The umpire giving it some thought, but sending him on his way. And just the start to the session that Sussex would have wanted. He made the point before T, Matt, that they would have been looking to just break that partnership before T, where they've done so immediately afterwards. And Northamptonshire are 66 for two, and Broad goes for 27. The second wicket for Jaden Seals. No, really well bowled there by Seals. Um, came in, ball just looked like it just nipped back uh, slightly, just watching the replay here, just nipped back, but Sussex would be uh, delighted uh, to break this partnership uh, just after the tea, uh, the tea break. And um, again, it's, it, it's a hard, hard time to start uh, coming into the final session. Um, now that you, you would say they've really got, you know, they, they can really hopefully build on this, um, especially with Seals and Robertson sort of bowling in tandem now. Um, it's going to be an interesting, interesting half an hour, and I know Farbray Simpson um, would be 
uh, they would have spoken about that at the break. So to, to get the breakthrough so quickly um, I is great to see for the Sussex players. Yeah, and you called that absolutely right. It just shaped back in, just nipped back a touch. And he'd gone forward, but not that much. And Empire, say, so gave it a bit of thought, but sent him on his way. So good battling effort for Justin Broad, as we say, in the unaccustomed role of opening the batting. Done a good job for his side, but he's gone now. And brings to the crease Karen Nair, who is back with Northamptonshire, the Indian Test player. So the Test Triple 100 to his credit. Played for Northamptonshire at the back end of last season. Played 150 at the Oval. Sussex would love to see the back of him early on. And the first ball from Seals is a good one. And it beats Nair outside the off stump. And applause from Simpson and from the slip cordon. This is good stuff from Jaden Seals. Picked up a wicket at the start of his first session. Picked yeah. up the wicket at the start of his second session. Yeah, really Spell, well rather. Session. Really well bowled. 66 for two. Interesting as well with that ball. Obviously, that would go down as a ball that's gone straight to Simpson, um, as a ball that, would, uh, that the, the batter hasn't played at. But there, it was a definite player miss driving him forward. So extremely well bowled from Seals. Seals in bowls to Caron, who drives pleasantly, but well fielded to his left by Ollie Robinson at mid-off. And applause for Jaden Seals. Picked up a wicket with his... Uh, second, uh, the uh, th seventh ball of his first spell, and he's picked up one with the fourth ball of his second spell. And Proctor is 31. Caron is yet to get off the mark, and Northamptonshire at the end of the over are 66 for two. The man out in that over, Justin Broad, LBW to Seals for 27. No, I just we just saw it early on, just into the afternoon session uh, with Justin Broad. Just just didn't quite get into the ball enough there, and obviously it's an extremely good bit of bowling from Seals with the ball. Uh, nipping back in, but just would have been really interesting if, if Broad would have really committed to the, to that ball and got right into it. Well, Ollie Robinson's going to carry on from the Cromwell Road into his sixth over, comes running in and bowls to uh, Luke Proctor, and Proctor drives back down the ground, fielded by Tom Haynes, who's smartly round at mid-off to field, and there is no run. A very good afternoon, wherever you're listening to around the country, around the world even, we've had listeners so far in Cambodia, in Honduras, in Ireland, uh, from Bexhill on Sea, just <laughs> down the road. So please get in touch, Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. You can tweet us at Old Man Rad, R A D D, or at Matt is Green, or at BBC Sussex Sport. In comes Robinson Bowles, and Proctor again defends down the track, fielded by Robinson off his own bowling, and there is no run. Or you can email us, Sussex Cricket at BBC. .co.uk. Thank you to those of you who have got in touch already. It's great to have so many people listening on the first day of the county championship. If you're just catching up what happened here, we had no play until three o'clock because of a damp outfield. In fact, the outfield is still very damp, but full credit to the players of both sides, the umpires, and particularly to the Sussex ground staff who did a great job getting rid of a lot of water because it absolutely poured with rain in Sussex last night, or in Brighton at least. In comes Robinson Bowles. Proctor lets that go outside the off stump. And there is no run. Just a word about the Sussex Cricket Museum. Keith Ridge and all his volunteers uh, who work over on the um, uh, on the museum, which is just underneath the Spen Karma Pavilion. If you've never been there, well, make sure you go and have a look um, over the course of the match. The pavilion opens for business. The pavilion. The museum opens for business tomorrow. Uh, so tomorrow you'll be able to wander in and have a look around some of the great exhibits and Great artefacts from uh, Sussex County Cricket Club. Robinson in bowls. Proctor defends. This is better from Sussex. Uh, I, I, they've certainly tightened up their lines, and Robinson isn't giving Proctor anything here at all. Play down the onside of the track. There is no run. 66 for two. In fact, I've had a message about the museum, so I'll just uh, make sure I've got the timings right for tomorrow. If you're coming along to the ground and you're looking for something to do, um, Official opening is tomorrow lunchtime. Um, more on that in a moment. In comes uh, Robinson Bowles and forward comes Proctor. Plays into the covers. There is no run. The official opening is tomorrow lunchtime. Uh, the, the, the Lenham family are due to open the museum. Uh, today they'll be working on the completion. So thank you for that, Keith Ridge. Um, 
very much involved in the Sussex Museum. I don't know if you call him the curator, Keith, but um, and the Lenham family, three dynasties of, yeah, of, of Lenhams, Les, uh, Neil, and now Archie, who um, we saw bowling out in the middle today, actually. Um, young leg spinner. Lovely evening now. Robinson in bowls and Proctor defends down the offside. Robinson fields up his own bowl. He's a little frustrated, Ollie Robinson, but he's making... The batsman player, that's all you can ask for. And it's a good over by Ollie Robinson. Six overs, two maidens, no wicket for 13. Northamptonshire, 66 for two with Proctor on 31. Mm. And they're yet to score. Well, I'm going to say it. It's the nicest part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we talk a lot about batting in partnerships, but just uh, just as we started the, this, this evening's session, Robinson, um, obviously, they're just connecting the dot balls. And uh, you haven't, I think, there's been four or five runs. Uh, after the evening session, um, after the, after the break in the session, and there, just Sussex really just starting to claw the, themselves back into the game. But Seal and Robinson bowling extremely well uh, in partnership together. Here's Seals running in away from us to bowl to Karun Naya and Karun driving on the bounce, and Seals sticking out a right hand and fields off his own bowling, and there's no run. 66 for two. It stays. Thank you so much for all your interaction. We have lots of tweets and messages coming in throughout this truncated day's play. Afternoon to Robert, who I won't um, take against him, even though he has suggested that I had two slices of cake. No, I've only had one. If I haven't finished mine yet, but... Uh, That's true. I can vouch yes, for that. Yes, but it, it's, it was... A bit, I have to say, the, sl the slices were... Um, big. Were big, <laughs> yes. There's, I was trying to think of a other way of saying it, but no, they were just big. His seals in bowls to Karun, who drives up to mid-on. Carson to field and there's no run afternoon Glenn Banks one of my old um, cricketing teammates who's uh, listening to us and enjoying the commentary good to hear from you Glenn also uh, the great Stuart Linnell one of the great broadcasters who's uh, listening to us and uh, suggesting that the cake is just the perfect start to the season well I wouldn't disagree with that Stuart but uh, the cricket makes it even better Lovely evening sunshine now here at Hove, and Seal starts to run in. Karen is distracted by something and walks away. It looks like, I don't know, something's, whether something was a flying insect or something has got into his helmet, but no, he's okay. He's uh, resuming his stance, but Seal has got to go back to his mark. And now running in away from us, South Stand behind him, and he's in bowls to Karun, who's just short of a length and plays that off the back foot out into the covers, and there's no run. Karun Naya, who has been involved with uh, the Ranji Trophy during the winter months, this part of the world, played in the final for Vidarbha against Mumbai duck in the first innings of that match but uh, did get runs in the second innings, got 70 odd but Mumbai winning that one and Pritby Shaw in the Mumbai side Pritby Shaw will be back at Northamptonshire in June all being well here's Seagulls in again to bowl to Karun who tries to drive and doesn't quite get his foot to the pitch and it goes off a thick inside edge onto the pad and rolls out into the onside and there's no run Karen playing three matches for North Aperture last season scored 249 runs made runs in his first match for Northamptonshire at Edgbaston played really well and even better his 150 against the champions elect Surrey down at the Oval as Northamptonshire took control of that game here's Seals in again outside the off stump left alone tightish leave quite close to off stump but Karun showing good judgment we've had innings of 150 I say against the quality of bowling on a pitch that was never particularly easy it was one right out of the top drawer if you're looking back at the last few seasons it's hard to think of a of a better innings of its kind for Northamptonshire in the Championship. Maybe I'll say from a 
point of view of personal enjoyment, and I know Matt saw some of it, Rob Keogh's effort against Essex in the last game took a bit of beating. Here's Seals in, bowls to Karun outside the off stump, again left alone. Goes through to Simpson, end of the over, Maiden. Seals now seven overs, three maidens, two for 19. Northamptonshire at the end of the over, 66 for two. Proctor is 31. Karun yet to get off the mark. And the runs have just dried up a little bit since the departure of Justin Broad. In fact, they've dried up completely because Northamptonshire haven't scored a run since the fall of the second wicket in the 26th over. Um, we can add Spain to our list oh of right. contacts. So the reason for that, just saying hello, great to see the underway. That's from Jack and Karen Simpson, who are John's parents. <laughs> so thank you so much for getting in touch, Jack and Karen. I had the pleasure of meeting John on Tuesday for the first day at the Sussex Pre Press Day. It was great to meet him, and uh, he took a very good catch earlier on today. He'll be pleased about that. In comes Robinson, comes in and bowls, uh, taken by Simpson, no runs. That's two players now. Ollie Robinson's dad's listening. <laughs> John Simpson's parents are listening. So I can't dig them out, can I? <laughs> <laughs> what a delivery by Robinson. What a take by Simpson. <laughs> oh, is it? I love it when um, people get in touch. So thank you so much. Really good to hear from you. And let's um, hope John enjoys a successful season here at Sussex. Who knows? Maybe after eight seasons out of Division One, he can lead them back. We shall see. It's a long way away. Um, but he's out there now in lovely sunshine, not quite Spanish temperatures, but in comes Robinson Bowles, and that's a good player, and he's caught, is he? I, I just wonder whether that bounced in front of Tom Allsop at first. They slip. don't seem convinced. No, they, and, and it wasn't a convincing appeal, was it? I'm just, just going to see what happened there. I, I thought the ball, do you think that, I mean, I, I thought he edged that. and it went. I think he did. It, it looks as though it turned him round. Um, my thought was that it might just not have carried, but... Let's have a look on the replay. Mm -hmm. Round the wicket. He did carry, and he obviously didn't hit it. Because mm. it did carry. It went, it went straight to... It did go into his hands, but... Robinson asking questions. He's in on bowls to Proctor. He turns this one down towards uh, fine leg. Sort of one of the three men who are fielding uh, out here towards the leg side boundary. Proctor goes to... An, uh, 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 Ollie Robson is never short of a word. I think he was just <laughs> having a little word there to Luke Proctor. Probably something like... Well, I don't know. I suspect it wasn't. I hope you're having a nice afternoon. <laughs> it looked, I can only assume that he, he it just came off the pad. Yeah. 32 to Proctor. 67 for 2. John has been in touch, and he's talking about the, the effects microphone we have here. He says, any chance of turning up the ground mic sounds? We get a little of the atmosphere with the ground. Um, yes, it, it is a little quiet, and I've got it fully turned up, so let's see if we can sort that out, John. In comes Robinson, bowls to now, who's forward defensively, punches that down the ground, fielded by the very athletic Jaden Seals. I like Seals. He's he's good in the field, isn't he? You know, he races around, bowls quickly. Uh, he's, he's really, he's, he's having a great start to, uh, yeah. a great debut today for Sussex. Uh, two wickets, uh, fielding well, and uh, I think the confidence of just getting a couple of wickets really would help him mm. in the field, settle in and, and you know, want to be a part of hopefully a successful uh, game for Sussex in a, in a season. I might go and um, see if I can do something about that effects mic at the end of the over. In comes Robinson over the wicket, bowls, now defends into the offside, no run. Add guitar to <laughs> our list of places. <laughs> above. I'm a North Ants fan listening in guitar in the Middle East. Glad to have county cricket back. County cricket is alive and well. Regards, says Lee Beswick. Hello, Lee. Lovely to hear from you. <laughs> guitar. Guitar, yeah. So there we are. It's probably hotter in guitar than it is in guitar. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a bad day. I'll tell you what, what the, the clock's on the wall now. It's, um, we're going to have an awful lot of them. We are. Yeah. Um, Bruce Talbot, Sussex journalist for many a long year, has just come into the box as well. Good to see Bruce. As it comes, Ollie Robinson racing in and bowls. And there is forward. That was a little uppish towards mid-off. And there is no run. So thank you, Lee. Lovely to hear from you. End of Ollie Robinson's over. Seven overs, two maidens, naught for 14. Northamptonshire, 67 for two. Batting has looked a little more difficult uh, since T. Uh, Ian Shin's been in touch. Hello to Adrian and the guys. Excellent to have the county season up and running again. Good to hear the commentary. Uh, spent most of the winter getting up at four in the morning. Ouch. To watch, to, sorry, to listen to India v England on my smart speaker. I'm mostly wishing I'd stayed in bed. <laughs> Hoping Sussex can take a few quick wickets and end the day in the ascendancy. Regards, Ian Shin. Hello, Ian. Thank you for getting in touch. It's lovely to hear from all these people. No, it's great. And uh, it's crazy when you think where everyone's situated around the world. Um, it's um, 
It's yeah. You don't realise what the, the cricketing, the commentary can do for, for people. Here's Seals starting a fresh over outside the off stump and it goes through to Simpson as Luke Proctor doesn't attempt a stroke. I mean, you think in the old days, um, and I'm very old, of course, that, you know, if on the very odd occasion that you were actually abroad or, you know, on holiday during the cricket season, it was something I think we all, you know, tried to avoid as a kid. But if you were ever abroad, it was, it was my memories of trying to pick up the BBC World Service on a little transistor radio on the sort of hotel of a balcony, some you know, balcony of a hotel somewhere, trying desperately to, to listen to Paddy Feeney. Yes. Here's Seals in again, bowls to Proctor, who plays it back down the pitch. Seals fields of his own bowling. Many thanks to Richard Beveridge, and I mentioned him before T, who mentioned um, the fact that his grandfather uh, had played for Northamptonshire and was interested to know what his player number was. And uh, the gentleman in question was called uh, Robert R.C.B. Wright, uh, Robert Charles Barton Wright, known as Roy, and he made his debut for Northamptonshire. Pause as Seals runs in again and pulls outside the off stump, left alone by Proctor. Made his debut for Northamptonshire against Glamorgan at Kettering on June the 2nd, 1923. His player number is 117. Yeah, so that's his go. unique player number. So thanks, Richard, very much for getting in touch and thanks for getting back to me on that one. So we're actually able to give you your relative's player number. We've also got greetings now from Abu Dhabi. <laughs> we have <laughs> listeners all over the world, <laughs> fellas. We're going to up our game now. <laughs> I'll give you the message in a moment. Yes. Seals in again, bowls to Proctor, who plays that very watchfully in behind it, and plays it out onto the onside. Seals feels off his own bowling, and there's no run. Uh, it's actually from uh, Ali Orr's dad, Duncan, who's been in touch. Hello, Duncan, lovely to hear from you. He says, my wife's hanging on every word of your commentary, <laughs> really. Well, uh, it's, it's lovely to hear from you both. Clearly, Ali isn't at the counter ground anymore, but it's um, lovely to hear from you. And, you know, I think we're all generous enough to wish Ali all the very best in his... Uh, career down at Hampshire. Uh, no play today, Rally, but oh, um, that's right. uh, w you know, we wish him well, and um, w you're always welcome to come and have a natter in the commentary box. Seals, in again and bowls, and that's very full, and it's driven by Proctor, and a brilliant bit of fielding, an extra cover. Um, it just slightly wrong foots the man coming round to cover, and the result is that they get a single, but that's a wonderful stop by Ali Carter. It was. Holly Carter, rather, an extra cover. It just deflected it slightly wide, just tipped it round the post, and Danny Lamb had to tidy up. So they're able to come through for a single, but that was four. That was a beautifully timed stroke from Luke Proctor and a cracking bit of fielding from Ollie Carter. The single takes Proctor to 33 and Northamptonshire to 68 for two. This is getting like worldwide family favourites that we <laughs> used to listen to Cliff Mitchellmore and Gene Metcalf. Here's Seals in, bowls to Caroon, and he plays that solidly out into the offside and there's no run end of the over 68 for two proctor is 33 Karun still looking for his first run seals has bowled eight overs three maidens two for 20 sunday lunchtime do you remember that uh, do, do you know i Come don't i'm just thinking i, I, I don't uh, and, and nor, <laughs> nor does no. matt he's nodding no. like he does but he doesn't no, really <laughs> not a clue <laughs> come, <laughs> come, come in at criteria no oh, that's <laughs> um i'll associate that with my oh, grandmother's slightly soggy yorkshire pudding right so. okay <laughs> but I digress. Well, Daddy Lamb is warming up down below us, but I, I suspect Aiden Seals may carry on a little longer. Two overs, what am I talking about? Two overs, eight overs, three maidens, two for 20. Ollie Robinson will carry on. Robinson looks to be sort of working his way back into the groove here. I've been quite impressed over the last couple of overs. Well, it's a glorious evening now. Runs in and bowls. Proctor. Well, he, he was looking to play that one down towards fine leg, and he was rather squared up. He picks up a single to mid-wicket and um, he goes to 33 for the 69 for two. First Division 1 century of the season from Kashi Valley of Worcestershire. Good player. Very good player. He was a graduate of the South Asian Cricket Academy. Yeah. 104 not out now out of Worcestershire's 259 for four. He smashed Sussex all round New Road last year in a 50 over and he looks a really good player. Robinson, four slips in place, down the hill, in and bowls, and uh, 
There is Stillwood off the mark. He's faced 13 deliveries. And Sussex just applying some pressure. Those four slips in place. There's a point, an extra cover, mid on, mid wicket, and a fine leg. Sort of Manchester City sky blue above the ground <laughs> at the moment. Is that Man City or Coventry City? Well, about Coven the same. Coventry, sky blues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coventry. Well, they call the sky blues, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. yeah. So is that sort of colour shirt? As Robinson wheels around, runs in the shadows length, and he's in and bowls, and there again defends. Robinson is right at the batsman here. It's a, good, it's a really good contest, this. It's an excellent a fine contest. player and a, a bowler who's working his way back, and there's been nothing given here at all. And this is Division 2 with the County Championship. Yeah, take mm. note. Um, all the talk is about Division 1. We, we did say, if you were listening to us, when we, we chatted for around an hour and a half before play, and, and it's, a, it's a strong division, this second division this season. There's some good players in it. And it's going to be a difficult job for any of the eight sides. You can make a case for anybody this season, any of the eight. In comes Robinson. Bowls, and this time let go by an air outside the off stump, taken by Simpson. And there is no run. It looks... Um Ollie's coming really steaming in now down the hill. Yes. I think he's, you know, this when you compared this to his first spell, I th you you would say he's just easing his way in, just the way there he followed through, um, just just the intent of the follow through really finished a good way down the wicket. Um, he's, he's, yeah, like you said, Adrian, just working his way back into the groove, but a really good start from both Sussex seamers um, uh, after the break. There's only been ten runs since T. In comes Robinson over the wicket. Bowls, mm. defends into the offside. There is no run, put it by Carter. Uh, David's been in touch. David Ingham in Nebworth in Hertfordshire. Nebworth, that's where the concerts. I saw mm. Tina Turner at Nebworth. <laughs> Did you see you? 1990, no, there was a lot of people, 100,000 people there. That was the, um, oh, what was the tour called? I remember it in a minute. Great. She was fantastic, I have to say. Um, he's enjoying watching, he's enjoying the commentary but he, and, in, and the live feed, but he can't see the replays. That's what Matt's getting up on his phone, uh, David. In and bowls. Oh, oh. there plays oh. a miss outside the off stump. Ollie Robinson looks rueful. That's a really good over. That's the best over that Ollie Robinson's bowled. Asking all sorts of questions. Eight overs. Um, three maidens. That's going to tick over to uh, no wicket. 14 and Northampton here at 69 for two. Proctor is on 33. There is yet to score. He's faced 17 deliveries, but he's still there. I was thinking if you need to go up and uh, do something with the effects, might you get Henry Crocombe to do it, couldn't you? <laughs> made, such a, made such a good yeah. job earlier on. If you're just tuning in, we had a, yeah. a, a ball hit by Luke Proctor Ooh. off Jaden Seals that went landed on the sort of the awning above the seats at the front of the members' pavilion. And Henry Crocombe um, managed to somehow rather gingerly get over the advertising boards, the top tier, and tread along the awning to retrieve the ball. It was a very, very good effort. As I say, health and safety, I think, would have had something to say about it. But he was none the worse for the experience, thankfully. And we have a change of bowling, and Danny Lamb is back in the attack. And bowls to Proctor, who on drives up to Robinson at mid-on. And there's no run. Still a great deal of breeze. There's flags on the... Scoreboard over to our right, the Northamptonshire Tudor Rose and the Sussex Martlets. Just hanging rather limply at the mast at the moment. It's supposed to be going to get a good deal windier tomorrow, they say. Three slips in as Lamb bowls outside the off stump, left alone by Luke Proctor. There's a lovely light out there at the moment, beautiful light. I'm not saying lovely in terms of batting in it, but it's a rather soft, rather hazy evening light very pleasant half past five here local time and i have to say that of course with listeners in all, <laughs> all parts of the world as we're discovering this afternoon but it's about half past five local time and here's lamb in and bowls on the hip of proctor who just turns it down to backward square for a single just waiting to see i think there was some bat on it yes there was so Proctor to 34, and Northamptonshire are 70 for two. We're in the 32nd over, so 19 to go after this. It's touch and go, I would have thought, whether the light's going to be good enough to get them all in, but 
Well, let's hope so. Man on the drive now for Karun. And Van bowls to him. He plays it very carefully, very watchfully. Up to mid on where Seals fields and there's no run. And Karun Nea's first class record mentioned is uh, playing in the Ranji Trophy final not that long ago. But in first class cricket, he scored, I was cutting, closing in on 7,000 runs. A first class average of 48.6 ahead of this. Lamb is in bowls to him and it's, I think he's he tried to tickle it down the leg side. Has he got any bat on it? It's gone down to the boundary at the Cromwell Road end and he hasn't got any bat on it. Signalled as leg buys. Full length ball. He was looking to try and clip it away through square leg. It went down much finer than that. Just down to where the tarpaulin is at the far end, the Cromwell Road end of the ground. So four more on to the total, but Caron uh, is still looking for his first run after facing 19 balls at 74. 4-2. Yeah. 48.65 to be precise, his first class average, nearly 7,000 runs. Here's Lamb in, bowls to him outside the off stump. And Karun leaves that, goes through to John Simpson, and that's the end of another over. And at the end of it, Northamptonshire 74 for two. We've had 32 overs in the innings now, with Proctor on 34 and Karun still on naught. No, and uh, Ollie Robinson to continue. Um, I've been really impressed with Ollie, um, especially in the evening session, um, making the batter play. Um, ball just starting to move a little bit off the seam. Um, ball really tightly to the stumps, drawing the batter forward. Um, but it's a hard time, uh, hard time to, to come in and bat now. Um, you would say that the game with Northampton is 74 for two. Um, the game very much in the balance at the moment. It's beautifully poised, isn't it? Here's Robinson in, and that's a short ball to start the over, and Proctor ducks underneath it. Doesn't need to play it. Of course, he took the short ball on against Seals earlier on. We mentioned Henry Crocombe's heroics in retrieving the ball. That was a sign that Proctor was going to maybe take on the short ball. But so far, with three men back... He's resisted the temptation against Ollie Robinson. There are three men back, one just in front of square, and two behind square, both of them about 15 yards in from the boundary as Robinson is in, bowls much fuller. And Proctor pushes out into the offside. And there's no run. Danny Lamb almost down in front of our commentary position. We're under the, the south stand here at Hove. Ollie Carter still with his shin pads on. Mm. He's down just behind square, and uh, Jack Carson's in it, just in front of square, almost on the boundary in front of the scoreboard. So we feel that certainly we're going to get one more short ball in the over. And here is Robinson from the Cromwell Road end. That's outside the off stump, and it's left alone by Luke Proctor. Goes through to Simpson. Most of the spectators who came in, there doesn't seem to be too many heading off home. Most people staying, and I suppose having waited that long for first glimpse of county cricket for six months, you're not going to nip off too early. I suppose it's these, uh, this discussion that we shall have, I'm sure, at some point about these the playing regulations and finishing late. Here's Robinson in, bowls again to Proctor, oh, well and that's a beauty. That squared him up. It bounced a little bit, it beat the outside edge. And that's Ollie Robinson at his very best. And Luke Proctor, well, just <laughs> rather ruefully practicing a defensive stroke, but there wasn't an awful lot he could do about that. That really was one right out of the top draw. 74 for two, it stays. And this is a terrific little spell from Ollie Robinson. Running down the hill towards us. Bowls again to Luke Proctor, who this time does get in behind that, pushes it up towards extra cover. And there's no run. A little bit more breeze now. Hamptonshire flag just starting to stretch out a little bit. Adrian Harms was saying earlier, it's a very large flag, it is. We were saying it sort of doubles as a duvet, but uh, nice to see it here. It's 
one of the scorer's traditional responsibilities, of course, to carry the flag around. So well done, Terry. Here's Robinson in again, bowls to Proctor, who stretches forward, plays it up towards mid-off. And that's the end of another testing over from Ollie Robinson. It's a maiden and one absolute jaffer in there. Nine overs, four maidens, no wicket for 14. And Northamptonshire at the end of the over, 74 for two. Proctor is 34 and Caroon still to get off the mark. I was wrong when I said about Nebworth. It was Tina Turner, but it was actually Woburn. Is that? Oh right. That's not in Northamptonshire. It's in it? Bedfordshire. Is it? Okay. And it was the Foreign Affair Tour. Um, I've just looked it up. <laughs> July 1990. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's 34 years ago this summer. That is frightening. Uh, however, uh, I was there. Uh, Danny Lamb is going to come running into bowl two now, who's faced 20 deliveries and is yet to score. Not that he'll be at all worried about it. I mean, Northamptonshire, if they can go to the close here tonight, two down, I think they'll be very, very pleased yeah. with their work. In comes Lamb, bowls uh, to Nehru. He's going to get his first run. He plays it to backward point and scuttles through for a single. Uh, James Coles very nearly collided there with... Who's that over there, Matt, who fielded the ball? Uh, is it Carter? Uh, no, it's Finn Hudson Prentice. Hudson Prentice. Looks like he's limping, Finn. Yeah. Doesn't he? Um, hope he's okay. Oh, he's wandering back to it. I think he's okay. Um, Danny Lamb is bowling with three slips. Backward point cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket. In fact, is he going off? No, he's not. He's no. just going down to deep, fine leg or sort of on the 45 degree as Lamb runs away from us uh, in and bowls and defended by Proctor to point. There is no run. I'm just looking at this photographer down below us. He's got a lens on this camera. I reckon that's about two feet long. Look at it. He's, he's in prime position. And he's probably getting some terrific photographs that will appear somewhere tomorrow, I'm sure. Away to our right-hand side, the Players Club, which is where I'm... Generally, on the second day, the players go in there and have a, a, a beer with each other, or lemonade, whatever they're meant to have these days. A few people in there just having a catch-up and... Glass of wine, in comes Lamb Bowles, drilled by Proctor to mid-off, Jaden Seals Fields, and there is no run. Um, and one or two spectators have drifted away, but still a decent enough crowd, and the deck chairs at the far end, the blue and white deck chairs, um, are reasonably well filled. In a few weeks' time, they'll be replaced. There's always a temporary stand for T20 cricket here at, uh, at Hove. In comes... And bowls. Proctor drives down the ground, four runs. Nothing Jaden Seals can do about that at mid-off. That's a nice-looking shot by Luke Proctor. Overpricked by Danny Lamb and drilled straight between the bowler and mid-off for four runs by Proctor. No need to chase that. Well, he goes to 38-79 for two. Good shot, Matt. Great shot uh, from Proctor. Again, been really positive in both uh, defence and attack. And I think it's really important, you'd say, after the, after the tea break, Sussex have definitely been on top uh, in this evening session. Um, so when you get the opportunity to score, it's really important that you capitalise on it. And as we've seen there, Proctor, opportunity to score and made the most of it with four runs down the ground. In comes Lamb running in and bowls. We breaks off for a moment. I'm not sure if that was Proctor who stepped away. Maybe there's a bit of chat going on. Uh, meanwhile, Gary Knight has been in touch. He says, uh, Gary Knight listening in from the Maldives. But then he says he's actually lying. He's not in the Maldives <laughs> at all. He's in Horsham. Oh, next, be next best thing. Yeah. <laughs> Horsham or the Maldives. Mm -hmm. uh, in comes Lamb and Bowles. Proctor lets that go through to Simpson. There is uh, no run. He says, uh, good job, us back. Um, I'm enjoying the day's play so far and hope that Sussex can nip a few more out before the close of play. I'm encouraged to see Ollie Robinson steaming in this evening. And to my eyes, at least, he looked like he's very threatening. I would agree. I'll be at home tomorrow. And I'm encouraged by the predicted balmy temperatures says Gary and I always back Hanno Gary by saying he's a big West Ham fan uh, there we are. Yeah. along with yeah. uh, North yeah. Hampshire's <laughs> cricket chairman Stephen Peters right. former, former North Hampshire captain huge West Ham fan right okay Tony Pemberthy as well remember Pembers played for North Hampshire for for many years vice captain he's a, he's a West Ham is man he? as well yeah so there we are there is a few around uh, there's a change in the field um, there's a deep mid wicket going in. There are just the two slips and a leg slip. This is an interesting field place. And they obviously think there's something about loop propped that means they've got a leg slip in place. Oh, no, he's, no, he's moving. Come on, Sussex. Leg slip, you've seen, we, we've seen him employed quite a lot against Proctor mm. because he does tend to get inside the line and try to turn the ball down there. And, and uh, but it's a position you often see tried against Proctor. In comes 
Well, Adam again bowls to Proctor, who turns that to mid wicket. In fact, James Coles have gone to mid wicket rather than leg slip. End of the over, 79 for two. I'm going to see if I can sort out this effects microphone so we get a bit more sound of bat on ball, which, um, who is in touch with us? John, who said he couldn't hear it. So if you hear some sort of rustling and roughing, <laughs> don't, 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 you know, I'll try to be as quick as I can. Well, if you have a problem, don't, don't, don't use any inappropriate language, will you, if you, if you drop something? <laughs> Won't be long. Right, you are. It's 79 for two. And the uh, batter's just taking advantage of a little refreshment. The temperature's 12th. Now, we're back with a vermilion bibs again that we, uh, that we saw, I think, last year. I'm just trying to see who's actually... Underneath this one, Alex Russell, young leg spinner. We talked about him earlier. Picked up six wickets last year against Kent at Northampton in the first of the Cookerborough ball games there. But he's had a really good winter out in Zimbabwe. Young Alex Russell picked up a lot of wickets in Zimbabwe domestic cricket, leading wicket taker, I believe, for, for Eagles. So hoping he'll get his chance at some point, but probably. As with Archie Lenham in the Sussex ranks, it's probably not quite no, the not conditions for, no. for the leggy just yet. So, he's going to be Seals having a run down the hill to replace Ollie Robinson with three slips in place. And he's in bowls to Karun, who's nicely in behind that, plays it out to Carter in the covers. And there's no run. Karun, with all the experience in the world, as we say, and a Record in first-class cricket, second to none, is not going to be phased, I'm sure, by the fact that he's made a very slow start here. And this is very much a Proctor innings, isn't it? it it's, it's almost like the Proctor prototype. Doesn't mind using up deliveries just to try and bat his side into a decent position. A little plenty of patience, hallmark of Proctor's batting as a rule, as Seals is in bowls. And Naya plays it up towards mid-wicket, go through for a sharpish single, but well judged. And Karun goes to two, and Northamptonshire to 80 for two. I'm slightly worried about Adrian on the roof, you know. Matt, I, I did hear lots of noises up there. Um, a bit of, bit of bumping and clanking yeah. and what have you. But, uh, oh, he's oh, he's back. He's back. And um, he reckons there's... Uh, he's, he's come down with, with something that looks like Ken Dodd's tickling stick, but I suspect isn't. Not but sure if that's any better or not. It's honest. a bit quiet, but anyway. It's Proctor on strike. Still three slips in. As Seals over the wicket, bowling to Proctor, and that's on leg stump, and turned behind square for a single. Carter comes in off the boundary in front of the scoreboard to field. Luke Proctor goes to 39. And Northampton should to 81 for two. The boffins are still working on the uh, the effects, Mike. We need somebody with a sort of corduroy jacket with leather elbow patches, don't <laughs> we? And a, and, a, and, a and a white lab coat to go up there and fix it. But um, anyway, the Northamptonshire support staff having a little walk around the boundary in front of us. As Seals is in, bowls to Karun, who's on drives beautifully away through mid-wicket, running out towards the boundary in front of the indoor school. Has it quite got the legs? Yes, it has. Crosses the rope, beautifully timed from Karun. He goes to six, and Northampton should to 85 for two. Jack Carson limbering up at backward point, so maybe we're going to see a bit more spin. He did produce one, didn't he, in that little spell before T, when he nearly did get one to turn sharply. So I imagine we'll see him perhaps in the attack before too long. The light is just maybe fading a little. But it's OK at the moment. We've still got quite a few overs, what, 16 to go after this. As Seals is in, bowls outside the off stump and Karun leaves it alone. Goes through to John Simpson. John Sadler, North Amplitude's head coach, down in front of us having a chat with Greg Smith, the new batting coach and Graham White who announced his retirement as a player at the end of the season but focusing now entirely on his coaching role the remit includes spin bowling fielding and the second 11 looking after some of the young up-and-coming players at the club 
on down the Rory Kleinfeld route of the sort of Nanook of the North stuff down there with his hood on. Driven up by Karun to mid off. The last ball of Seals is over and there's no run. End of the over. 85 for two it is. Proctor is 39. Karun is six. We've had 35 overs, so 16 to go in the day. So that's an hour, isn't it? That takes us up to about quarter to seven. And you just suspect that Graham, Graham White spotted us, John Sadler spotted us, hello there. Um, you just suspect that by quarter to seven or thereabouts, it's going to be a little bit Noah's Ark, unless it, the light com improves considerably. It's just starting to get a bit gloomy, Matt, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you, know that you know this ground much better than I do, but it just seems to have closed in a little bit in the last few minutes. Here's Robinson, so they've swapped it. Oh, sorry, it's Danny Lamb, isn't it? So Lamb bowling that full-length ball, and Proctor's jammed down on it. It's running down towards third man, and they come back for two. Takes Proctor to into the 40s, 41 to him, and Northampton to 87 for two. Apologies for the extraineous noises, but <laughs> Adrian's still he's back on the roof again, trying to get the effects mic working. <laughs> Danny Lamb in his ninth over now. No wicket for 20. Down to two slips now for Proctor, but they do have a man on the drive on the onside, and Proctor finds him immediately right on cue. Full length ball, but he turns out to short mid wicket where Ollie Robinson fields. And there's no run. Field now then, two slips, backward point, extra cover, mid off mid on and a short mid wicket and then a man down at long leg in front of the indoor school far side of the ground at the Cromwell Road end and here's Lamb round the wicket bowls to Proctor who cuts and a good bit of fielding at backward point by Jack Carson cuts off any possibility of a run stays at 87 for two what's happening elsewhere. Essex just sliding away a little bit. I mentioned they're 170 for two. Now 223 for seven. Lyndon James has got it on the act with the most recent wicket. Here's Lamb in again. Bowls to Proctor. He plays it out towards mid-on, but it doesn't get that far. There's uh, James Coles comes across in front of Ollie Robinson to retrieve. In that Essex total, Jordan Cox, former Kent player, of course, is 76 not out. He's watching the carnage from his end. What Four wickets have fallen in pretty quick succession. As Lamb is in again, bowls down the leg side to Proctor, who gets everything out of the way, taken by John Simpson. Worcestershire now 271 for six against Warwickshire at Edgbaston. And Kashi Farley out for 110 to Ollie Hannon Dolby. In Division 2, the other match is in progress. Glamorgan 351 for 3 against Middlesex at Lords. Sam Northeast 184 not out. Wow. As Lamb is in bowls outside the off stump again. Left alone by Proctor. And that's the end of the over. Just two runs off it. 87 for 2. Proctor is 41. Karun is six. Uh, and at Headingley, Leicestershire 110 for three against Yorkshire. Uh, Marcus Harris made 56, but he's now out. A couple of wickets there for George Hill, a talented young cricketer. Yes, he is. I'm not sure I've completely sorted this out. I can hear the wind in our effects microphone, but it should be a little louder. So my apologies if it's... Um, can't um, hear sort of the noise of the players and the bat on ball. Um, Steve Harris, thank you, Steve, has taken a photograph of me trying to fix the effects. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that'll be one, Steve, to send to the BBC Health and Safety <laughs> Department as well. Probably have to fill out a risk assessment for that, I would imagine. I imagine we'll have to get the boffins in on it, will we, at the uh, overnight and get them on the roof? And well, I don't know. Yeah, we've got to. There's not too many boffins to sort it out, though. No, well it's it? very true. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, I'm afraid, uh, Jack of all trades. Um, Versatile. Well, <laughs> Multitasking. Yeah, well, apparently. Uh, Jaden Sills is going to bowl for the first time down the hill. And he's coming running into bowl to 
and now he's on six and he plays it into the offside there is no one I would say the chance of us getting through with these remaining overs are, are very remote yeah. and you can see the lights in the Spain Carmel Pavilion we were yeah. yeah we were just making that that observation yeah. I mean it, Matt obviously knows that know this ground and you know the ground very much better than I do but it does seem to have really filled in in the last 10 minutes or so it has. and I think the chances of us getting another what 15 overs in a Fairly slim. No, I agree. It, and actually, you can always tell from the the light when it's up at the groundsman's hut at the far end. It, oh yes. It, you can yeah. see it. that's always my sort of light meter, and you can see it. In comes Seals, bowls, good delivery, well played by Nero as well. He just ducks, sways out of the way through to keep a Simpson no run. Yes, it was a no ball, well spotted. Um, we've had all sorts of glamorous places around the world, and I'm not suggesting for one moment that Newcastle isn't glamorous either, so we'll add it to the list. But it's probably not as warm in Newcastle upon time as it is in Abu Dhabi and Guitar and mm. where else was it? Cambodia. Honduras. Cambodia, yeah. Um, so uh, Bruce has been in touch. Bruce Wells. Hello, Bruce. He says, great to be back on board for another season of county cricket at Sussex. He's hoping for promotions for both Sussex and Crawley Town FC. Uh, thanks for the coverage. Yeah, Crawley having a very good season in League Two. Seals is in over the wicket bowls uh, it drives and that's going to be four runs uh, 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 Sills has got his hands on his head it, it wasn't a confident looking shot he was looking to drive that in front of square but it rather came off of the edge of the bat it's flown away for four runs it wasn't in the air very long so it was safe but moral victory for the bowler man um yeah you could say so um moral victory uh, but never really looked like um a chance uh there for, there for Carson at a, a backward point mm. and I, I like the way Ness still being uh, positive it, opportunities to score but just as you see now the light is really just starting to fade even in this last over it is. now um, it's actually quite evident Seals again uh, runs towards us he's in on bowls and that's a good leave actually right at the last minute you pulled the bat outside of the line and this is testing it i mean northamptonshire at this stage will be very happy to say thanks very much yep. we'll go back to the hotel now bat under the arm yeah thanks very uh, much off we go yep. yes I, I think they'd be more than happy at this stage of proceedings um, one or two people around the ground may not be aware the floodlights can't be used so that might be quite interesting if they go off for bad light yeah no very much so no wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if proctor there's having a word with the <laughs> with the umpire just it's questioning the light uh, very like slightly now with a word in his ear <laughs> yeah it's not great seals runs in again bowls and there is forward plays back down the track and there is no run so it is the end of the over yeah luke proctor having another word there to paul baldwin um uh, in fact in terms of the light because we're behind a slightly tinted screen here it always looks slightly worse than it actually is, but I think the key, as you guys pointed out, are the, the lights in the Spen Karma Pavilion and the light at the far end, our own sort of inbuilt light meter, which is showing out towards where the uh, Ben Gibson and his merry men keep all their equipment locked away up there. Or some of the equipment locked away up there. Seals racing in bowls and I think Nair took his bat out of the line did, of that. Yeah, yeah, good uh, leave. Through to Simpson, and there is no run. 93 for two. At the end of this over, I'm going to have another play around with the effect of my microphone, see if I can try something <laughs> to it. It's a bit irritating, isn't it? Um, cause I, I, don't, I, I think there must be a problem with our wire somewhere, because I can't hear it at all. So, uh, John, I do apologise. You got in touch and said about it. We tested it all on Tuesday, which makes it, <laughs> makes it doubly irritating. Um, but you certainly can't hear it, and I've tried a variety of mics, and I think it's a it's a loose connection somewhere, which is very frustrating. But at least you can hear the commentary. In the field, Carson has gone from point to deep backward point. Seals in again, bowls, forward comes now, plays into the offside. Carter is there, gets in the throw. In fact, he threw to the wrong end, um, because now it was very s quickly down to the other end. He picks up a single. It is the end of the over, and will have to show on 94 for two. Pock to 41. Nair is on 11. I didn't see the umpires sort of look at each other. But no, they haven't um, They I haven't come together, have they? So no, I, I, I don't think ball, ball, uh, oh, now they are. Yes, I think, who are they? Mm. Uh, there's a little knowing look. Yeah. Well, oh. they're staying on for now. I see Jack Carson is going through his limbering up routine mm. in the outfield, so maybe... The word has been said. Well, okay. Let's, if, if you know, if you want to stay on, you're going to need to 
just think about who's bowling, which is not ideal, but as I say, we've we've done well to get as much cricket as we have, and um, you know, the risk of over-egging the pudding, we really have to praise again the efforts of the ground staff here to get any cricket on, given the amount of water that was coming off on the blotter this morning. They really have done very well. It's going to be Lamb to continue with Northamptonshire 94 for two. We have, in theory, 14 overs left to be bowled in the day. Interesting field for Karun, and John Simpson's placing this with some care. Two slips, then a point. Man on the drive at short extra. Lamb going back to sweep at extra cover, and a mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket is what's worked away off, and I suspect somewhere around about middle stump. Down to fine leg for a single by Karun. Yes, that's um, that, yeah, that was taken off. As I say, I suspect something approaching middle, and possibly even middle and off. <laughs> and I think there's well, there's just a few good-natured words being exchanged out there. I'm sure. Well, and also you've got um. Lamb coming round the wicket to the left-handed Proctor with two slips in, and he's in, and Proctor's, again, this sort of rather Shivnarine Chanderpaul-type defensive stroke plays it out into the onside. No run. A few hands going into pockets now. It just as makes you feel it may be just the temperature's dropping a little bit. One or two spectators. I was going to say heading for the underground, but of course you don't have that here. No more than we do in Northampton. Maybe for the bus. With Proctor taking his time, <laughs> I think it's fair to yeah. say. Um, probably maybe just as I say, having a discreet word with the umpires. But he's into his stance now, and here's Lamb round the wicket again, bowling to him full, and Proctor's pushing that up to mid on. And so there's no run. It's very. Um, Umps are going to have a word. Yeah, y you wouldn't be surprised now if. If, if there was a metre reading taken and this is the, is the base level for the game. Um, yeah. I think you've, you've got to say really hats off to Proctor. Um, when you talk about trying to manage the game and what he's doing, he's not only is he batting for his side, he's yeah. also he, he captaining and, and trying to protect the other players and coming back tomorrow, Saturday, sun out and, and going again because it's an excellent uh, platform Northamptonshire have got to build on. Well, they've had a word, but they're not coming off. They're going to stay on at least for the time being. And Danny Lamb is switching to over the wicket. Lights on the scoreboard now over to our left. Really quite bright as Lamb runs in again. Three slips in place and bowls to Proctor, who's playing defensively. Just almost drops it down. In front of him on the offside, Carter comes in from the covers to complete the fielding. Batters have another little chat. Paul Baldwin's in conversation with the fielder at square leg and he will be aware, I'm sure, of the lights on in the pavilion behind him. <laughs> Proctor is, is not going to be rushed, is he? Here's Lamb in again and bowls to him and Proctor coming right across his stumps, plays it out into the onside. And there's no run, runs out to mid-wicket. So the umps have had a, a sort of preliminary chat. But so far, at least, they seem happy with the conditions. But it, it's certainly, to, to my, and it, you know, it can be horribly misleading, but to my eyes, it looks as though it is getting a bit darker. Here's Lamb in again, outside the off stump, left alone by Proctor. End of the over, it's 95 for two, Proctor's 41, Caron is 12, and I think the umpire's going to have another word. No, they're not. No, they're quite happy at the moment. They're enjoying themselves. Yeah, and I think w w when we spoke about what, what players do in the winter and, and how players uh, develop and, and put themselves in situations to come into seasons and improve, what, you, what we're seeing from Proctor is... Um, as the captain of the side and experienced uh, profession professional, is just the way he's managing the situation, um, managing the conditions, managing his time to ensure that he's putting his side into a position where they can go on and, and win the game later on in the game. Um, but, you know, it's very, very 
good bit of experience batting. Again, something you can't really teach, right. something that's got to come from experience, something that's got to come from playing games and, and being exposed to different situations and settings. This is his 136th first-class match, his 70th for Northamptonshire. His Seals running down the hill from the Cromwell Road end, bowls to Karun, who drives up to mid-off. And there's no run, and now the umpires are going to have a, another chat. Uh, coming together. They didn't take a light meter reading, though, did no, they? No, they didn't. The uh, well the Jack Carson still, <laughs> still whirling his arms down to our right and getting himself ready for a little spell, but I think that's it. I think we're coming off. Yes, we are. Well, I have to say I'm not hugely surprised. It's, it's just a couple of minutes past six. Uh, but I think, well, it's not necessarily it for the day, but I think um, I be would be surprised, and again, I say you know, the, I defer to your knowledge of the local conditions, but it doesn't look somehow like the sort of evening that's going to, the clouds are going to disappear in the next few minutes, and the, s the lights now, the sort of the advertising signs on the, the scoreboard over to our left are now shining really very brightly. They are now taking a metre reading, aren't they, I think, so that'll be the benchmark, and... So, bad light stop play at two minutes past six with Northamptonshire 95 for two. Yes, I don't think it's a surprise, and I, I suspect there won't be any more cricket tonight. There's, um, you know, the, the cloud has filled it a little, and I think um, that'll probably be it uh, for the day. And if it is, I think Northamptonshire will be pretty pleased, having lost the toss you know, in April against, you know, Seals and Robinson to be walking off, what, 95 for two, I think having been five for one. I think they'll be the happier of the two sides, Matt. No, definitely, uh, very much. And I, what, what I was really, really impressed with with the Nottingshire um, team was the way they approached that final session when um, the wicket from Sills uh, picked up the wicket early and it, it had the potential to... Th the game was really in the balance, and especially that session, and the, the way Proctor uh, went about it and managed that, um, not in terms of sheer ru weight of runs, but just how he managed his time at the crease his professionalism, the way he, he interacted with the umpire um, or umpires, and now his side uh, go in uh, 95 uh, for two. If they can come back on day two and really build on this, it's a, it's a great platform and a great um, springboard to hopefully, or from a Northamptonshire perspective, hopefully put themselves in a position to, to go on and win the game. Like g games aren't won on the first day, but games are definitely Could lost. Be lost on the first day. Um, yeah. And... Hats off to Proctor there, he batted really well and batted well managing the conditions. And I do feel, Matt, it's absolutely right what you say, and I do feel that Northamptonshire will be mindful of what happened a year ago, uh, the opening day at Canterbury, where um, they had a, you know, a really poor session, admittedly in extreme and much more difficult conditions than... than